of the Castrol Gold Coast 600. Let's recap the standing. Steve Owen at the wheel of the car that is shared or driven for much of the season by Mark Winterbottom. He leads our Drivers' Championship by 306 points now. David Reynolds very close in third there to Craig Lowndes. And Fabian Coulthard moved to fourth yesterday. And remember, it's the endurance phase of the championship. Final enduro race of the season. Yesterday, a change at the top of this leaderboard. Warren Luff and Garth Tander, who have been mighty, chipping away all throughout the enduro campaign, moved into the lead. There are five combinations in contention this afternoon seconds. and 150 points up for grabs. 25 starters. Neil talked about strategy and pit expectations there before. It's a gruelling, bruising place, this one. That said, we really only saw a late safety car yesterday afternoon. Will the complexion be different today? They need straight race cars for the flyaway aspect of our championship when we head to Auckland in a fortnight. It's a tight turnaround for the teams who are working enormously hard. The honour of sending them on the formation lap to Jonathan Thurston. McLaughlin leads them away. We look at the Fuso starting grid. This was a pole position that meant a great deal. It's career pole number 13 for him in the V8 Supercars Championship, his second here on the Gold Coast. Alongside our Bathurst winners, Craig Lowndes and Stephen Richards. Yesterday's winners, Van Gisbergen and Jonathan Webb, they are fast. Out to make amends, Win Cup and Paul Dumbrell. It's been a difficult endurance campaign for them. Mark Winterbottom and Steve Owen, our championship leader's car. Scott Pye, brilliant performance to be on row three. Our enduro championship leaders, alongside Tim Slade and Tony Dalberto. Lots of repairs to that car yesterday. New gearbox, as we detailed before, overnight. For the car of Reynolds and Canto, they struggled with the downshift and big repairs to Team 18. Jack Perkins back with James Courtney, who was fast yesterday, even with the rib injury. Jason Bright, Andrew Jones, a hole in the radiator yesterday, took them out of the game. Rick Kelly alongside David Russell. Kelly was fast in qualifying yesterday. Nick Perkat and Oliver Gavin from position 15. Their team boss, Barry Hay, says watch for that pairing. They have a very fast car. Both the Erebus entries, Penwright and Wendy's, are on the next row. And we find Todd Kelly and Alex Bunkham out of 19. David Wall alongside Chris Pither. They've shared a great endurance campaign together over many years, those guys. Both at Brad Jones Racing and now at Gary Rogers. The Kiwis have been getting better with every outing, but it's new turf for them. The streets of Surface Paradise in a V8 supercar. Cam Waters, now the primary driver. At Mathist, of course, he was the co-driver, but a big crash for Chas Mostert in qualifying took them out of the game. He's dealt with that responsibility very well, Cameron Waters. And the rookie, Macaulay Jones, off the back with Dale Wood in the third of the Brad Jones Racing entries. It's an awesome sight. The transformation was completed in recent weeks. The concrete line streets, 197,000 people here over three days. And it's the biggest crowd we've had, in fact, since V8 Supercars began promoting the Gold Coast 600 back in 2012. Get involved in the conversation. Who do you think will win the race this afternoon, and more importantly, who do you think will win the Pertec Enduro Cup? Use the hashtag V8SC. Real sense of determination by the, the Kiwi McLaughlin. He wants this badly. Well done, well done. And another well Kiwi knows all about that. Greg Murphy with some thoughts on the start. Yeah, thanks, yeah, Rossi. Absolutely. As per yesterday, every car on the grid has the co-driver in the driver's seat. And as per yesterday, the Volvo S60 of Scott McLaughlin is on the front row. This time, though, he managed to get another armour or pole position. Alex Premer on board, did some damage to that car yesterday, which effectively ruined their race. The pressure is on these guys. We had a very clean race yesterday as far as safety cars go. Will it be the same today? This leg is going to be out of control. Listen to the sound of the cars. Fans have enjoyed so much great action here already this weekend. The thunder. Owen engages the gear. We are good to go for the final part of the party. The Castrol Gold Coast 600. Nice start by the Red Bull Commodore McLaughlin. Well, the car of Premier has struggled to get away and Stephen Richards will take the race lead. He's under threat here from Jonathan Webb and from Paul Dumbrell. 
Xbox, oh, a bit of a touch. Andrew Jones gathers up the BOC Commodore. A few of them dive to the other side of the chicane. It's wild through the chicane for the first time. Excellent start, Stephen Richards. Made air straight away. There he is on the back straight. Very messy in the mid-pack in the first chicane. And even before they got there, it was Andrew Jones that was being spat out of the pack on the left-hand side of the road. Richards, Kremer, Webb, Dumbrell, Owen, Ambrose, Luff, Canto, Delberto, Perkins, Bourdain. Looks like Bourdain trying to make a move down the inside there. Does he complete the mission? Fighting with Taz Douglas and Jack Perkins. Look at the gap already. 1.1 seconds. Maybe even more now over Alex Premer. Webb's pushing, pushing Premer here. Volvo driver does not want to clout the curves the way they did in the first stint yesterday. Awesome start, Stephen Richards. 1.5 seconds. Look at this here on Jonathan Webb. Dumbrell can't do it. So Delberto had to go straight line. So did Dumbrell, and Dumbrell's redressing. He's going to drop a spot here, though, to Steve Owen in the process. Very awkward place to be on the outside down there at turn one. There's no compulsion to yield to the Ford. If he's got right away with the nose ahead here, he can hang on, which he has. 1.3 seconds is the gap that Richards has earned in the first lap and a half. That's a handy starting cushion. Xbox Ford of Marcus Ambrose there in sixth position. Having another look was the Team 18 entry. Problem in the rear end with this car we're hearing on the radio. Something's failed. This is Jack LeBrock at the wheel, car number four. As Greg Murphy pointed out before, all co-drivers are in the cars and every car in the field at the moment is on a hard tyre. So it's playing exactly to the strategy that I spoke about before in the Wilson Storage Tech Centre. Had an issue with a long pedal in that Mercedes yesterday. Talking with Jack LeBrock this morning. Good sectors, good lap from Alex Premera. One minute, 13.80. He's shaved about half a second off the lead that Stephen Richards enjoyed. It's now just on a second. Dumbrell's just eased away slightly now from Steve Owen, from that threat that was present one lap ago. Let's have a look here at the replay of the start. Excellent drop and go there for Stephen Richards. One of the Nissans was really battling to get away there. That was David Russell in Rick Kelly's car. And in the mid-pack on the run down towards turn one there, there was some aggravation. We're on board now with Jonathan Webb. Watch Stephen Richards go on the right. He displays straight past Alex Premer. And Webby got a very good run as well. This might explain what's happened to Andrew Jones in Jason Bright's Team BOC entry. So straight away I can see it's going to turn into three wide down here. That doesn't work. Taz Douglas. He's getting the big squeeze. Oh, that was very messy. And that cost both Taz and Andrew Jones. And the guy that they were squeezing was Sebastian Bourdais, who doesn't easily blink. Nice save by Andrew Jones and all of that. You from Dean Canto. That's Del Berto in the super cheap entry that had to go across the top of the traffic island down there. This is the stuff that typically goes on in pretty much every race in the mid-pack. There's a lot of instinctive driving involved in all that. Just got to do the best you can. That's a right-hand mirror missing from car number 14 for Luke Yulden. That tucked in the memory banks because sometimes later in the race when you sometimes can't understand why certain things happen because they can't see. Here we are on board with four day. Damage on that car yesterday down at turn four. Margin is now under one second between Stephen Richards and Alex Premer. This is the 11th position we're focused on at the moment. Preston Higher Entry, Charlie Schwerkop Racing, one of the cars in the Walkinshaw Racing family. Just a couple of spots in behind there, Oliver Gavin. He's moved up two. 
having started on row eight. So Gavin in car triple two is currently in 13th position at LD Motorsport. They were saying this morning, this guy, he's such an experienced sports car racer, success at Le Mans in the GT category and in various formula, but he's so good on the equipment. He said he brought that car, the state of the tires back yesterday. Barry Hay was very impressed with his drive. He's continuing that now. A yeah, tough start for the uh, Wendy's entry of Ash Walsh and Jack LeBrock. It's a broken right rear arm for the boys, so really disappointing day for them. Meantime, the sister car, thank you, Rihanna. Car nine at present, Alex Davison at the wheel in 16th place, the Penrite Mercedes. And it's as a result of damage, so it, uh, you can see the right rear corner of the car's had a hit there. Whether that was another vehicle or the war, I'm not 100% sure, but it's going to take a little while to get that back on its feet. Yeah, stable there, isn't it? 1.077 seconds between Richards and Prema. You're watching Alex Prema in second place. Behind him, Jonathan Webb in car 97. And then Paul Dumbrell at the wheel of car one. The Red Bull Racing Australia Commodore. Luke Gilden on Andrew Jones here. This is turn 12, so Andrew's turned in and Luke wasn't able to get it stopped and turned on the dirty side of the road there, so twice in two days I think those cars have had a little rub. Point six of a second now this margin, so all of a sudden something's happened to nick half a second out of that in the last half a lap. Isn't that a magnificent uh, sight? Main Beach Parade, literally right next to the beach. Prem are much close to the back now and he's drawing Webb along with him. So he can really see the back of that Red Bull Holden. And by this stage of the game, the drivers are all now well aware of what they're dealing with, with car balance, the way the car's braking. They can also see what's happening around them. They can sense, in particular, the driver in front, sometimes even the driver behind them, as to what they're also dealing with and where their strengths and weaknesses lie. So they start to play the chess game adjusting the car, informing the crew about tyre pressures and the feel of the car, whether or not incoming tyres will have a variation in pressure. New fastest lap for Prema. He picked it up a notch on that last lap for a 112.6. He was a tenth quicker than Stephen Richards and he's got the margin down to exactly 0.62. Interesting the different strengths and weaknesses in the cars. Richo looked like he got off that final turn well, got good drive, but in other parts of the the track Prema closes the gap, 0.6. And Jonathan Webb sits in third. There's the Freightliner Commodore. Also in pit lane for us this weekend, along with Greg Murphy and Rihanna Crean, is the 2014 Bathurst winner. One half of that combination, Paul Morris. Hey, Brad, you guys sort of buried me pack and already got a few blood noses. You're always really creative and come up with something different, but what can you do in this format? Well, it's not what you can do, really. You know, I'm, I think these things are too long to, to try to double spin on softs. Didn't work yesterday, so it's just a matter of trying to stay out of trouble and mull your way forward. So it's not always easy, but um, we'll see what happens. So you're just stuck in the trenches, fight your way out. Well, I think that's a bit the way it is at the moment. You know, you need to get good car speed. I thought Bridie had really good car speed. You might yesterday on hard, so you might get to the middle of the race and be able to do something a little different. But right now, you, you're sort of stuck following the leader with this format. Cool. Thanks, man. Thank you. Trouble out here for Pedersen and Pitha. Car triple one and 34. That's the Volvo up the escape road. And we saw Pedersen at the back end of that interview trying to just draw the Super Black Racing Falcon out of the barrier there as well. Uh, whether they are related incidents or separate, not 100% sure. Right there, Contact the there. Car off down at 13 in the runoff. We'll need to retrieve that safety car. You can move out now. Safety car, move out now. Just run. Heavy contact there at turn 11, so the two of them got together. Pedersen's victim out the outside here in the tyres, and I'm hearing that from the cockpit of car 34 that uh, something's collapsed in, collapsed in the right front of that car. No surprise, having eaten some concrete there, it's stranded, and therefore the safety car. Kiwis have come together, safety cars out. Stephen Richards leads the way. So RCF Lexus safety car 
looking to pick up the leader at the moment down at turn four, and this is Pippa. Now he made very heavy contact in, as a secondary impact. No worries, Chris, you were doing all right. You were doing all right, don't worry about that. So, marshals are just down there keeping an eye on those very, very hot brakes. Some people are going to take the opportunity to just jump out of sequence here. Not a, not a play that you would take if you're in the front half of the field, but if you've qualified poorly or you've got off to a poor start in the race, it's not a bad gamble here to get some fuel in and shorten up the time that you'll be stationary a bit later on. And uh, they'll need to get onto that brake pad fire there before that starts to generate a few more invoices. A reminder of just how hard the brakes work around this, this track. Only a handful of laps into the race. Because the car's been at full operating temperature and then just come to an immediate stop, there's been no cooling effect at all. Five of the seven stops around here are very big pedal pressure. They make big go, brake go, temp go. north of 800 degrees. So when something's sitting there and then it has absolutely no cooling at all, everything around it fries. So Pedersen's underway again. So he's copped a bruise, but it hasn't been a knockout blow. But for Chris Pitha, Kiwi, who's at the front of the car, just assisting the marshals there at the moment, that Volvo will be retrieved on the flatbed truck. Big go-kart style dive bomb from Chris Pippa. You can see the damage down the left-hand passenger door for Ant Pedersen. Far enough forward. Big move. Trouble with the pulling a move at turn 11 is that uh, in order to make it stick, So plenty of guys down there with the fire extinguishers to be able to sort that. That's going to make for a very big clean-up. Remember your remark a little bit earlier, Greg, that there's about three nanoseconds between the end of this race meeting and packing up and air freighting everything across to Auckland for the ITM 500 next event on the calendar. So for everybody at Wilson Security, Gary Rogers Motorsport, those Polestar Volvo boys are going to be working pretty hard between now and the next race in New Zealand. Rick Kelly, it's always a difficult task as a co-driver to start these races, and I'm sure that's one that Dave Russell will want to forget. <laughs> Could be a lot worse for us. These things are very difficult to get off the line at the best of times. So we're back in, uh, I think we were second last. We're already up to 21st, so we've made a stop now, so we've got a full tank. So the guys in front, we're a little bit stronger then. So good challenge for us, but can certainly get back to somewhere reasonable. The safety car gave you an opportunity there to, to mix up the strategy. Yeah, absolutely. For us, we've got to offset ourselves that little bit now. We can't have a double stack behind Todd. We know how painful that can be from our point of view. So we've just got to be a little bit clever and get in and see where we can go. I mean, there's a lot of driver mistakes yesterday, so for us, we need to capitalise on those and get ourselves back into the tent, which I think is more than possible. Long day ahead, Rick. Good luck. Yes, thank you. Started out of position 14 in the Jack Daniels Racing Nissan Altima. David Russell, his co-driver, currently at the wheel. Right now, they are 21st in the order. Partly cloudy afternoon. We were worried about rain yesterday. It's been a glorious morning so far. And we're under safety car. Richards leading the way from Prema, Webb, Dumbrell and Owen. So hopefully we'll get a restart soon. They've had the fire extinguishers on that Volvo of Chris Pithers and David Walls. Not just the brakes, but they've actually had to use some of the use the extinguishers under the bonnet and this will be a decent cleanup. Have a look at this for the Gary Rogers team. So once it got a bit of oxygen there when the bonnet was opened away it went but the good news was that marshals are on the job there so they're able to get that sorted but it begs the question that that's going to make a very difficult turnaround for the very tight amount of time in preparation for the next event at the ITM 500 in Auckland. The teams will be flying out of Brisbane and Avalon for the Victorian based teams very quickly after this event. Lounge here, uh, sitting there watching on the marshals go to work. It's pretty good seeing your car out the front. Great start by uh, Stephen. Did a beautiful job to get away nice and clean. Yeah, yeah, like he was a little bit annoyed from yesterday. But, um, you know, it was a 4.5 start, which is not terribly good for us. But, um, you know, he uh, obviously was uh, very focused on getting away. Um, you know, he got a ripper start. The thing looked like it hooked up and then drove away, which, uh, you know, he got a good lead on the first lap, stayed out of trouble. Of course, the safety cars now, he uh, now cancelled all the gap that we had, which was only, I think, a half a second at the point. But, uh, of course, 
good, good restart again and see what we can do. Yeah, we know how the safety cars around this place sometimes breed them, so you guys are in the absolutely perfect spot and hope, uh, obviously, John O'Webb can put some pressure on Prima and take it off, Steve. Yeah, look, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, we saw yesterday cars are going to be really fast. The Volvo was quick until it had a front spoiler damage, so um, we're not surprised. Um, now, Richo will obviously stay out of trouble. He won't do anything silly, but uh, we're where we need to be. We need to be at the front, need to be out of, uh, out of drama and uh, in clean air. Good place to get another trophy. Cheers, thank you. When Craig makes reference to a four and a half start, he's talking about seconds, measuring it from stationary to 100 kilometres an hour. So it's about a second and a bit off the money. Anything in the low threes is a very good start. So yesterday wasn't to their satisfaction, but today certainly was. And they had a second and a half up their sleeve at the end of the first flying lap. That's Chris Pither's Volvo on the flatbed truck now en route back to the pit lane where work will start on that immediately in prep to get it to New Zealand. He was sharing with David Wall. Some drivers have taken the opportunity to grab some fuel. They include Andrew Jones, Carl Reinler, David Russell, Dean Fiore, and Ad Pedersen came in for damage repair as well. It's been a tough endurance campaign for Car 34, hasn't it? Our first retirement at Mount Panorama. David Wall and Chris Pitha, then this today, and yesterday wasn't issue free for them either. So it kept a perfect score in the recent past on this modified racetrack of safety car interventions. It is a very high risk track. We've been talking about it a lot through the weekend. And I was going to make the point before the fire on the Volvo, the turn 11, very awkward. It's got a lot of rise and fall and camber in the middle of the turn. The road tapers away, cambers away on the exit. And it's very difficult for the preceding driver to know exactly where the other driver is there. So if you go to make a move at 11, it has to be very, very surgical. Right up the inside, very quickly and positively. It's not an easy thing to be able to do because it's also the dirty side of the road, so you're prone to brake locking. And then you've got, the joke is, two turning and two burning. The front wheels are stopped, the rears are still rotating. You can't get the car to get around the corner and pull up and you end up in the door of the other guy. Chris Pitha was very impressive in the Dunlop Series race at Mount Panorama, coming from last to finish on the podium for Matthew White's team. And while we've learned some of the moves in the game of musical chairs, the driver moves for 2016 in recent days, and his name has come up a couple of times in conversation with potentially a full-time drive next season. He subbed for David Wall in the Volvo when David was injured at the Australian Grand Prix support races earlier in the year, and he's been with David for the entire endurance campaign in the second of the Gary Rogers Volvos. The other car, of course, as we take a look at the stricken 34, the pole sitting car in the hands of Scotty McLaughlin being driven by Prima, currently second. So I think what actually uh, went up there was because the brakes were so hot because the car came to immediate stop. It's Chris just explaining what happened to his teammate David Wall. And uh, the inner guard in those cars uh, wouldn't cope with the sort of temperatures that were radiating out from that brake rotor, I'd say. And it's, it looked to me as though it's. Uh, ignited the inner guard and the areas around there. Hopefully there's not too much damage, although just even the fire retardant cleanup is a big mission when you get it back into the shop. Lights out on the Lexus RCF safety car. We are about to resume racing here on the streets of Surface Paradise. Stephen Richards leads the field. Already done two Carrera Cup races to wrap up that championship earlier today. He won it last year, couldn't defend that title, was hotly contested in 2015. Richo controls the field. We are good to go racing once again on the streets of Surface Paradise. Prema trying to stay with him on the jump, stay nice and close. Be wary of those overlaps at the restart. Richards with superb on cold tyres at the standing start of the race. Prema tried to shadow him out of the final corner. Steve Owen it is who just pokes down triple the inside. One, good lane penalty for car triple one for driving infringement. And that's for Ant Pedersen in car triple one, Super Black Racing, for his role in the incident with Chris Pither up at turn 11. A bit of climb through that back chicane. Two-wheeling, just love it through there. Ollie Gavin, lots of air. A little bit of margin on those. 
hold her tyres. Normalising again, it's point eight between Richards and Prima. Remember that Steve's doing a lot of racing miles this year. Carrera Cup, where he's had a battle on his hands this weekend. Fresh from victory at Mount Panorama. And hundreds of V8 supercar drives. Alex Primer, on the other hand, not doing nearly as much racing in 2015, so it really comes as no surprise for me that Stephen's in good shape when he needs to put his head down in this phase of the race on cooler tyres. So he comes into the race meeting this weekend, Richo, with 441 V8 supercar starts, so he's done a lot of it. He knows what to expect and how they feel. Compare that with Alex Premer, 67. There's Chris, young Kiwi. Yep, not much you can do about it. And uh, and there's his counterpart on the racetrack that was involved in the incident, unfortunately, and Pedersen. 1.17 seconds now, Richards to Premer. This looks interesting because these guys are shadowing each other. Premier Webb, Dumbrell, nothing in that. And then Steve Owen's actually in a nice spot at the moment. He's not sucking down too much hot air from the preceding cars. He does have Warren, uh, he does have Marcus Ambrose, I should say, right behind him, and then Warren Luff. A bit of space there now, you can see it between Dumbrell and Owen. Fastest lap of the race so far at 12.69 to Premier. See that group of cars coming out of the final corner then at 14 and 15. There was a heap of them. It's just a never ending train of cars. I wouldn't want to be at the back of this pack. It'd be hard work. You can't see where you're going because of the preceding cars. Oh, big lock up there for David Russell, the front row. He's going to go straight ahead there through the traffic island as a result. And really hard work in the pack there. Car will be slipping and sliding around. Brake temps will get up, water temps will go up. And we're looking at Sebastian Bourdais here in car number 18. He's sharing with Lee Holdsworth. Turn six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there's a positional change now. So Paul Dumbrell gets one move done. He wagged a tail on the exit and sneaks one by on Jonathan Webb. So that's up to position three. Jonathan said to us in the lead up to this race, he was feeling a little better today. Hasn't been completely 100%. That would have been quite taxing, that race yesterday. Super first stint by Jono as we take a look at the move by Dumbrell on the Darrell E. Commodore. So that's what I was talking about before with turn 11. If you're going to get it done, it needs to look unequivocal. Fire up the inside with kilometres an hour in hand. Position early and have the car set up in confidence to do it. I'm digging that shot. It looks fantastic. That's 260 plus kilometres an hour. Hip, and you can see the way they all close up under brakes. There's a couple of very close indeed. We've just got that cushion back again as it was prior to the safety car. Back out to 1.3 seconds. And we'll just see what happens now that he's been released as to whether or not Paul Dumbrell can rip into that margin to Alex Premer. It's 1.4 seconds. We'll keep an eye on those numbers. Guys, I'll just uh, quickly catch up with Chris Pitt. He's really disappointed, mate. I know it's no consolation at all. That uh, the blame was apportioned there to Andy. Got a drive through penalty for that one, but uh, your race is done. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, um, I felt like I was comfortably up uh, inside on that corner. I'd had a look two laps prior, and I wasn't. I pulled out, but that lap, I thought I was comfortably in the gap. And um, I don't know if they're potentially not running a left-hand wing mirror or something like that, but I think you just didn't see I was there and, and turned in. Uh, it's our day done. Disappointing because the Wilson security Volvo was fairly pretty good, and I was looking forward to a good day ahead. Disappointing, mate. Thanks. And Pedersen said to me this morning, it's a reminder, it's only our first time here as Webb fights back on Dumbrell. Doesn't quite regain the position. It'll be a big fight down to the chicane here. Now, Webb, he's on the racing line. <laughs> They're both going to struggle to get through here. Look at Dumbrell. He had it all crossed up in the middle there. He only just skated out the other side with it bouncing. It was interesting because... The Dumbrell move up the inside at 11 was very positive before, but I was watching on that last lap and he stayed with him for the whole run. 
So the slow-mo replay gives you an idea to pull apart what you're seeing out there. And what you're seeing is extreme driving and these cars at maximum capacity, just full attack here. Look at it. He only barely scrambled over the top of that middle curb. View at the time from the 97, it looked like he was going to straight line right up nice and close to the wall. Calm, collected. Mark Dutton watching on from the Red Bull Racing Australia bunker. 1 minute 12, 5, 2, 3 for Alex Premer. New fastest lap. Back to Jonathan Webb chasing Dumbrell at the hairpin. Paul didn't quite hit the mark down there. So he hasn't really skipped away. And... Remember I spoke about the gap between Premer and Dumbrell and it was 1.4, it's now 2.6. So getting mixed up in this battle has now taken his eye off trying to get rid of that cushion to car, uh, car number 33 in second position. We'll stay with this. Let's hang around here on board with Jonathan Webb and have a look, listen and learn and we'll get a bit of an idea of the car behaviour here too. Stressed out there at the moment that uh, the car just doesn't look totally comfortable on the road. Shane Van Gisbergen to the right, 2009 Dunlop Series champion John O'Webb around the streets of surface. The reason that I say that is that on quite a number of occasions I've spotted Dumbrell's car just not quite going where he's pointing it. I've seen it on a couple of occasions and the lock up there. I saw that smoke when we were on board before in the techno car and I wondered who it was that had sent off the smoke signal. It was Alex Premer. Front right was locked on the run into one because the fronts are never square there. A little moment there also for uh, Webb. So a bit going on out there at the moment. A bit of pressure on these boys. They're all pushing hard. Richo's got a 1.7 second margin now in the lead in car triple eight. Here we are again with Jonathan Webb. just allowed Dumbrell to skip away a bit now. So a bit more fresh air between them. And it's 1.9 seconds premier to Dumbrell. So he's managed to start to close that margin once more. Two Gold Coast wins for this guy in his career. One last year with Van Gisbergen and one again yesterday. They're a great combination. As we've said a few times, he mightn't do a lot of race race running during the season but when he steps in he just does a super job as a co-driver back to this group here which includes tony d'alberto in the super cheap auto commodore he's in position nine ahead of jack perkins then sebastian bordet it's ironic with jonathan webb when you look at his development series performances and also uh, his first primary series victory. He does have a liking for it. He openly admits he enjoys street circuits. Some guys don't like I know different drivers in the past that just never particularly warmed to the notion of hitting curbs that hard and flying up against concrete walls. He's completely comfortable with it. It meets his eye. 1.48 seconds is the gap between Richards and Premer. There's Dumbrell. There's Webb. Owen's a little closer to him now. Now, Ambrose and Luck, who were former teammates back in the Stone Brothers era, are in combat here, sixth and seventh. Those cars didn't sound that healthy on the way through there as well. This is the kind of place that will break the exhaust headers because of the extreme loads that go through the cross member in the front of the car over the curbs. Interesting 
obviously the different body language in the cast as well as they all came through the chicane that time. 12484, quicker slap of the race is Prem up, and the gap is 1.5 seconds between Richards and the Frenchman. Then Paul Dumbrell, Jonathan Webb, Steve Owen. We're back with the battle that includes Warren Luff in car two. Marcus Ambrose ahead of them in the 17 in sixth spot. I think losing a bit of that track time on Friday with that nagging vibration problem for car number one hasn't helped their cause this weekend either. I had a word on the grid with Jamie Wincup. It's been a weird weekend for them, but jumped out of the gate with extreme speed. And I think they've lost a little bit of track read along the way. So I thought that Dumbrell would be more likely to be able to get up here and box away with both Premer and Richards, but at the moment he doesn't appear to have the speed. So they might do a little change in their first stop. So we'll keep an eye on that one too. It's an exhilarating lap from Dumbrell. It didn't get the result. He really had a crack in the top 10 shootout. We've been monitoring Paul Dumbrell's progress, and he's had a few good sectors pop up just now. So whether I weren't sure that he could battle Neil was saying before that wasn't sure about whether he could battle with some of those up in front, the likes of Prema and Richards, but some good sectors here now. And Dumbrell, in fact, sets a new fastest lap of the race at 1 minute 12, 3, 4. So that makes a lie of those remarks of mine. It might just be getting the right combination of anti roll bar settings front and rear, getting the brake bias control just right, or even just settling into a rhythm. Sometimes it's tyre phasing as well. This is on board with the race leader, Stephen Richards. One and a half second gap over the Frenchman, Alex Premer. There's five seconds covering the first three. The top 10 are covered by 10 seconds at the moment. Remember that the minimum laps for the co-driver covered it off in the Wilson Storage Tech Centre. It's 34 laps, and that was a queue yesterday for many of them to come in. But in terms of the range that the cars have got in them with this fuel load, they'll get to somewhere out in about 40-odd laps. Remember, we've had some safety car intervention. So that stretches that window. So we'll, we're coming up to the phase in the not too distant future where we'll see whether or not people decide to just yank the co-driver out early or whether they choose to leave them in a little longer. I think one of the things that many of them will be trying to do today is to avoid that pit lane congestion we saw when a lot of people came in and they all tripped over each other. And getting into your box and getting out of it here, it's very costly if there's people around you. Some awesome racing between you guys yesterday. I reckon it was acceptable behaviour, but because your teammates are probably doesn't look as cool, how's it going to go today? Oh, probably more of the same, really. Yeah, but, uh, to see. No. Oh, it was a good hard race yesterday. We both uh, you know, out there pressing on as hard as we can for the team. So uh, we come away fourth and fifth from starting where were we? Yeah. Tenth and thirteenth. It's not a bad effort. So it's all good. Press on. That's what bumpers are for. Yeah, yeah. we learn it from you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Years of yeah. experience. So, we both hard races. Both How was the okay. debrief? That was fine, they right. got a bit upset, we were yeah. fine. We were, <laughs> we were laughing right. about it. So, Burgess was just a bit oh, more animated yeah. in here, by the time he got to the debrief, he calmed down. Yeah, yeah. We were probably the two calmer blokes, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, well, you guys looked like you knew what you were doing. Yeah, no yeah. one got wrecked. No, a no, bit of paint no, traded. Good. You obviously had a, probably thought you had a quicker car towards the end and yeah, yeah, wanted yeah. to hold that track position and he wanted to get on with it. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, it was, I think it was lap 50 or something when we were racing at the start and then, um, yeah, at the end, I think JC got caught up with a lap car and that gave me an opportunity to get back by, but, you know, if there was a scratch on the car, it was pretty small. Yeah, press on, boys. We need more of that stuff. <laughs> Paul Morris talking about the rivalry yesterday between the two HRT drivers. It was fierce on track toward the end of the race. Right now, both cars are in the top ten. Warren Luff in seventh place. Jack Perkins is in tenth. You saw that uh, warning about the bad sportsmanship flag for car 21 for overuse of curves. I was just going to talk about the positive for Macaulay Jones. He started from position 25. He's made his way up to 18. The rookie has done a good job here in race two on the surface. He's in front of Andrew Jones and he's just behind Russell Ingle who yesterday clocked up 250 V8 supercar events. He's already number one in that ranking and that's a pretty special milestone. We're on board with him here on the run to turn 11. The other thing that makes it tricky at this end of the racetrack as the afternoon wears on is those shadows that you can see there in the braking area. Evident here also at turns 12 and 13. 
very easy to just get the trajectory wrong with your turn in and suddenly just glance a wall on the inside or the outside. Milestone weekend for Russell, this endurance campaign where he's come up, come out and done some stuff with HRT and with Pro Drive. This is his 250th championship round start. Impressive by Russell Ingle. Guys, I was uh, standing in the pit lane just a couple of laps ago and heard a, a sound like a bit of a sick car and it was the triple two. I came down and saw Barry Hay. It is, they think, just broken a header. Hopefully it's just broken a header, but at the moment it's uh, sounding a little bit like a tractor out there. And, Hopefully they'll be keeping an eye on that and it uh, continues on. But at the moment, uh, uh, no, not too many concerns, just uh, a bit of a different sounding triple two. Yeah, I thought I heard one uh, in the background a few laps ago. It's got a distinctive awkward sound. Listen to it. It doesn't necessarily harm performance to any major degree, but the big risk is that uh, you can set fire to something, depending on where the leak is, you can do other peripheral damage and so uh, they'll be keeping a very close eye on telemetry information in there. This little battle here continues to rage. This is Marcus Ambrose and Warren Luff. And further back we've got some missing action here as well between 7 and 23. Alex Buncombe, the Englishman, and Dean Fiore. Issue for LeBron sort of as well after they were in the pits very early in this race. They had a long pedal in car four yesterday. That's a bit unnerving for LeBrock in particular as he learns his way around the streets of surface in that primary car. That's car seven, the car sales Nissan Altima. Alex Buncombe down in 21st now. Did a pretty good job to get it pulled up and then insert the car back into the field right in amongst the teammate cars between David Russell and also Dean Fiore. Back here to Luke Yulden and Alex Davis in their 14th and 15th. Just a bit of time in their stops yesterday in the Penrite Erebus Motorsport entry. That was Ingle that you had a glimpse of just in the background here as well. So this is 14, 15 and 16 on the road and you can hear that car of Oliver Gavin's in the background car triple two for Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport. It just sounds shocking at the moment. They might have their troubles down at the Holden Racing Team, but you can't say that here at Pro Drive Racing Australia. Mark Winterbottom, um, Steve's done an awesome drive. Kept everything really nice and clean, and uh, you're about to jump in the car, and you're desperate to get your hands on that Perth Second Duro Cup. Yeah, it's, uh, hey Chaz, I've traded you in, buddy, for a younger model, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, hi to Chaz in the hospital, but, um, yeah, we're, we're about to get in the car, not too far away, and uh, little fella come over for a cuddle, so we'll give a cuddle and we'll get in the car soon, but Steve's doing a good job. We, um, we're going all right, but there's some quick cars, so it's a long day. Cam Waters, uh, Russell Ingle, uh, I think he's gone up seven positions in this first in. He's doing an awesome job. Yeah, no, he's done a really, really good job. He's um, got an awesome start, obviously, and um, just picking him off one by one and keeping the car straight and hopefully get a good pit stop and can kind of stay there and move forward a little bit more. I don't know about you boys, but I feel really awkward right now, so I'll let you go. My leg is tapping, too. Yeah, That's not your leg, mate. Anyway. Here's a fun fact. In 1994, Russell Ingle was driving in our Coca-Cola Wayne Garden at Commodores up at Bathurst and at Sandown and what have you. That was the year that Cam Waters was born. <laughs> Richards leads the way by 1.6 over Prema and Dumbrell. Closing in on the minimum requirement for co-driver laps. Can we expect some stops in a familiar way? Chad Nail on to race 26 yesterday. Well, that's how it fared with the co-drivers. Took the very first opportunity, including this man, Alex Premo, to dive into the pits. As soon as that 34 lap minimum had been reached, again, it's that awkward period where if a safety car came out, they'd probably end up turning more laps than they would please these co-drivers because they'd have to take the chance of a pit stop. I saw a few of the guys towards the back of the field come into the pits where we did get that very brief safety car early on when Pedersen and Pitha got together. A couple of Kiwis right down in that corner. Oh, on the limiter. The whole way up to turn 12 is Prema. And if you can bring this back in second position today without the damage, it's job done. It wasn't just the splitter that he hurt. He did hear the power steering as a result of the heavy contact with the beachside chicane tyres. And uh, he would have been really kicking himself as a result. But at the moment, Richard's looking very clean up front. 
Ambrose has just done a 1 minute 12.82 for his fastest lap of the race in sixth as he's got that increased pressure on him from Warren Love. Caps have just opened up a little bit here and there. There's a bad sportsmanship flag about to go out also for Marcus Ambrose for shortcutting down there at turn two. 1.7 seconds, a static gap here. You can see it between Richards and Prema. Pretty much an equal margin back to Paul Dumbrell. And uh, Webby there in fourth position. How's this one? Don't want to come back as a tyre bundle. Pretty brutal existence. That is the very bundle that ruined Car 33's race yesterday. It's good that we haven't seen PLP come into it. That's what ruined race two on the Sunday for Car 97 last year that took Webb and Van Gisbergen out of the play. It's funny, our pictures graphically showing just how the cars are using so much kerb there and immediately the radio lit up with a heap of engineers telling drivers to beware of the bundle down there. So they're looking very carefully at the very same pictures and managing accordingly. This little battle's raging here because uh, Luff almost got into the back of Ambrose then. He can't get too wild and weird because Dean Cando is right in here as well behind this car. There he is in the Botlow Racing entry. Didn't qualify quite so far up. We've got a problem here for Ford LeBrock. That's, I think, turn 12. Up and away again. You're right there, Jack. Sorry. Back to that battle that I was speaking about. So these three are tied together at the moment. And one false move, and Luff looks like he's ready to grab Marcus Ambrose. Good shot by Dean Canto as well, running with these guys. Battles intensified in recent laps. Marcus Ambrose put down a personal best in response to the pressure from Warren Luff, but the main game or the primary drivers are getting ready. They are suited up as we hit that minimum target of laps for the co-drivers. James Moffat, here's Craig Lowndes on the podium yesterday. Garth Tander, who leads the Pertec Enduro Cup with Warren Luff. Great speed yesterday from Rick Kelly in the Nissan about to take over from David Russell. And there's our driver's championship leader. Tough day, he was fuming when he got out of the car, but he let it go pretty quick. Just in Bad the last. sportsmanship flag for car 14. Bad sportsmanship flag of 14. Curbs, overuse of curbs. It's reset when there's a, a new competitor jumps in that car, so but he's nearly out of lives there for that manoeuvre. Now that margin between first and second has just opened up a little as well. It's out to 2.6 seconds now, and just in the last couple of sectors it's gone out another couple of tenths. But this is a mighty battle here involving Ambrose, Luff, Canto. There's a train of cars all starting to form a queue here behind the Xbox Falcon. So it might be just starting to hurt its tyres a little. 34 laps is the minimum for the co-driver. There's fuel range capacity to go further. The risk here is that everybody dives in and then they're on top of each other for the turn in and then the roll out. Ready and waiting at team 18 as well. Sebastian Bordeaux currently 11th. I can hit engineers, look at this, Luffy thought about it. Engineers counting their drivers down, obviously with a predetermined plan, and some of them are just locked on it, so they've made their minds up before they've come into the race that that's how they're going to play it. Some people in the lane today were talking about waiting to be a little more reactive rather than having a preset plan so that you can be mindful of who's around you when you pull that card, so that you don't end up in the lane in this congested scenario. Got by Tony Delberto here as well. He's closed up on Dean Canto. Tony and Tim Slade know how to grab those surfboards, those trophies here. Particularly asked Marcus earlier in the weekend whether this was the, the last hurrah. He didn't want to commit to an answer. It may be. 
announcement for Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske for next year, for Fabian Coulthard and for Scott Pye. This will be 33 laps complete. I'm sure there's a, the opportunity for him there to be a co-driver if he wants to be, and that's probably going to be something that Marcus thinks about over the summer period. I think one of the points that needs to be made about him is a big lock-up in the background there. I think it was poor day is that he's done so much intensive racing, so much more than we even do here. And boy, we do a lot of racing in this series. And they're getting ready. So a lot of people are going to commit to this same strategy that they did yesterday. Seems unusual for some of them. But uh, making the point about Marcus, nine years in NASCAR competition with an extraordinarily long calendar, certainly in their main series over there very mentally taxing. So this is Shane Van Gisbergen, yesterday's winner, getting ready to jump in, take over from fourth place, Jonathan Webb. They're on standby at Wilson Security Racing, Gary Rogers Motorsport. And that was Scott McLaughlin. This is Craig Lowndes. His teammate's the leader, 2.57 seconds. James Courtney's on standby, and in they come at the Holden Racing Team. Now, Paul Dumbrell stayed out. They don't need to be double stacking for no good reason. In comes Stephen Richards, in comes Alex Premer, in comes Jonathan Webb. Steve Owen has come in. Staying out is Dumbrell, Ambrose, Luff, Dalberto. Remember, they share a boom at Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske and Techno Autosports, so hence the reason Ambrose stays out. Yeah, give it one if you want. So I think most people are putting on a hard tyre. It's a hard tyre for Van Gisbergen, a hard tyre for the Holden Racing Team entry. Again, this pretty much like we saw in the tech centre when we went through what happened yesterday. So a nice clean exit there for car number 888, out and in front of 33. A bit of the margins diminished. See, there's a flag there warning them of that uh, garbage on the road down there as well. So Perkins and Courtney having swapped. 14s in and out as well as 21 and 15. So Luke Gilden handing over to Fabian Coulthard. Macaulay Jones handing over to Dale Wood. Rick Kelly now in car number 15, Jack Daniels racing. Oh, 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 oh. Nearly wiped car number two on the rear bumper of the Super Cheap Auto Racer. That's Tony Delberto in the 47 car and Warren Luff in car number two. So Dumbrell, Ambrose, Delberto and Luff in. So everybody's committed themselves to getting it done straight away. You're clear for now. Four seconds, one again, clear for now, clear for now, clear. Clear. Remember the two was racing 17 and is now in front of it. Lachlan looked closer as well to the triple eight as it left pit lane. Not much, but maybe a second faster in its pit stop at the Gary Rogers team. The rejoin, so oh Shane Van Gisbergen opts to go to the right there as car two rejoins. So Alex Davidson is at the head of the field in car nine. I'm not sure why car two slowed there, slowed all of a sudden and the 47 was through. Those positions since the stop have, have changed. So Tanda, eighth in the queue, and Slade is tenth in car 47. Just looking at uh, numbers in here, it's a 20 litre shorter fill for car number two to affect jumping car 17 in that queue. They were trapped in there for a while, it seemed, behind the Xbox, the Johnson Racing Team, Penske, Falcon, and the Holden Racing Team entry. So chosen not to stand still quite so long for Garth Tander and for Warren Luck. That's the reason why they got that extra game. Alex Davis is the leader of the race. And Russell Ingle. They're the only two that have not yet stopped. A lot of work 
on car nine overnight. A lot of the bracketry and mountings and things. Nothing serious after that incident at this point of the track yesterday. There was a huge concertina, lots of cars involved. The 47, the 18 coming through now as well. A little worried about both Will and Alex about their fuel economy. They don't think it's as good as it should be in car nine. So we're riding here with James Courtney. He's tucked in behind Lee Holdsworth, 12th and 13th. Tanders up the road a little in eighth as a result of the difference in fuel strategy there. And looking, see James was still getting himself comfortable in that car as well. Just still sorting out the belt tension, getting everything exactly where it needs to be. There's very little in the way of time, especially if you decide to short fill for any reason. Okay, go, 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 good to go. Guys, I uh, just went and spoke to Warren Luff there. But if we saw that exchange, the replay just before the 47 going around the outside of the two, that was just before they came into the pits. Unfortunately, Warren Luff with a big head shake said that he accidentally turned on the speed limiter as he went around that corner and uh, obviously hesitated that car enough for the 47 to get by. Oh, that's weird. New fastest lap of the race, Jamie Wincup, 1-12-1-3. Car one is fifth in the order. Russell Ingle leads, but is yet to pit from Dean Fiore. Then it's Lowndes, effective leader, when you talk about stops and things like that. McLaughlin and Wincup. Seems a good numbers at our Shannon speed trap over the weekend. At this point here, nudging almost 260 kilometres an hour. So Ingles coming from the lead in car number six. We already did lots of miles in this car yesterday. Michael Caruso was a bit upset as the race went on. And Fiore ended up back in the, in the car. I remember the Dean Fiore in 23, just double checking the figures here, it was one of the cars that took the safety that, car Johnny. refueling. Car, so it's put him out of sequence. Yeah, okay. Coming up on 10. You're on 10. Okay, okay. Right, right. Clear to go when it drops. Clear to go when it drops. Clear to go when it drops. So Cam Waters in the Still hell clear. now. Still clear. Go, 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 go. Okay. Doc Ingle goes back to the future, to the back of the garage, as it were. And based on recent form, it can start knocking on doors up and down the pit lane. <laughs> Here's my phone number, here's my business card. So Dean Fiore after that early stop leads the way in car 23 from Craig Lowndes, Scott McLaughlin and Jamie Wincup. There is John O'Webb. He's a happy dad, isn't he? Recently got sick off his uh, young man recently this week as well. Young so Judd. Yep. The whole family's been a little bit crook, but thankfully for Jonathan, he's been pushing through the sickness this weekend and has returned another clean stint behind the wheel of 97. Wind Cup continues to show some good sectors here, Chad. So fastest in the middle sector that we've seen so far. There's a couple of tenths off that best lap we saw. Just recently, he's fourth in the queue. You're watching Craig Lowndes ahead of Scott McLaughlin. Second and third in the order at present. Some of that gap evaporated as Baz is going for a chat now. Could this be related to the broken header on triple two? We saw Jamie Winkup pick up a win at Sydney Motorsport Park with a broken header. So it can limit performance just a little bit. You can still get away with it. Someone's got a big problem down here into turn one and Whoa. then someone is car number eight. So the Team BOC entry was puffing a huge amount of smoke, uh, smoke on the run down there. So the splitter's gone under the front wheels. You've got to be super careful of that. When they do go under, if they go right under, you can momentarily completely lose steering in the car, which can clearly be very, very dangerous. The right front of the splitter, a lot of damage to the right front of the splitter. So, so I think we need to... <laughs> and even when the cars look slow, they're not. So he's going to have to get that car back in, Jason Bright get that sorted. And Barry Hay was in conversation with Frank Adamson, confirming also that every car out there at the moment has gone back out on a hard tyre. So it's hard, hard, soft for the final run. Uh, this is uh, Cam Waters. He's in 21st at the moment. He's tucked in behind the ailing car of Jason Bright. Uh, I'm assuming that Brighty will pull left and head into the lane. He does. 
So pretty lucky to get back there without ending up in the wall. So all cars on hard tyres. Uh, this is James Moffat in car number 99 making a nice move here on Scott Pye. Fourth position. He's gone up into 13th as a result of that. Yesterday it was a radiator issue for the BOC Commodore. Set to replace that front splitter. They go to work. So I'd say he's clobbered that set of tyres up in the fast chicane in the back straight because that's indicative of the sort of damage that we saw yesterday from several cars. So Dean Fiore is the race leader with 17 seconds in hand and uh, his first stop was at lap seven. So he's out of sequence. Therefore his fuel window closes earlier. Uh, advantage, I was going to say, was 23 seconds at one point. It's come down to 17. And uh, he's lapping about one and a half off the pace we're seeing from Lowndes and Scott McLaughlin. In that chasing group. Watching Dean Fiore with a 17.1 second lead over Craig Lowndes and Scott McLaughlin. The advantage was just over 20 seconds. It's now come down to just under 17 seconds. Craig Lowndes making some good laps and so is Scott McLaughlin. So some pace from the 888 Commodore and from the Volvo as they chase. But it is a different sequence as Neil said before in terms of, of pit stops. They've got Bright back out. He just went past our commentary box. And uh, this is Jack LeBrock, Betty Clemenko. Difficult day, unfortunately, at Erebus for the Wendy's entry. So just confirmation once again that all of the cars out there in the field are on the hard tyre. Nobody's elected to do anything different. Yesterday we saw a couple of people vary their strategy slightly, but the soft tyre just didn't cope with the notion of doing a double stint, even with the rotation. And this is Dean Fiore, who's the leader now. He was one of the four drivers that took advantage of that safety car, which has changed where he's at in the sequence of windows. Might need a safety car to be able to help correct that at some point. But at the moment, he's got fuel that would get him as far as lap 55. So he's hustling at the moment out there as a 13 on the last lap for him. But remember, he'll be on older tyres relative to those around him. And it's a mechanical black flag for car number three. Play, and the mate, driver's window net is down on that later, car for mate. Tim Blanchard. So that'll be the reason why Barry Hay was in conversation with Frank Adamson. Triple two. Sounds like a tractor. Nick Perkett's now at the helm. So far, there's been no obvious performance loss with that car. Fix his window now. Fix this lap. This is the sister car. Yeah, Team Cool Drive Commodore, Tim Blanchard at the wheel. He and Carl Reindler finished in the top 10 at the Sandown 500. Right now, Blanchard is 19th. Barry Hay, Team Boss, says we are seeing real progress from that driver training. That tuition that he's had with Paul Morris. That's right at the limit there for Win Cup, who's got it all crossed up in the air and very close to being over the boundary line. So he's in fourth position at the moment. And he's in for the window net. He's kind of a three Tim Blanchard. He's out of 19th position for this one. And it's not something you can manage as a driver. Looks like the nuts just come off. Looks like just the nuts have come off. So we're just going to put some new onion and holes on it now. See, that's uh, costly in terms of, well, everything. Getting in, getting out, and then the stationary time to resolve it. And uh, Tim knows it. If that's just the nylon work, i just get it started, brother, and chill off. This is going to put him right at the back of the train. Make sure all clear. And it's still running, it's sitting there okay, in use, should be making heaps please, of water please, temperature please, and away please. he goes and still shaking his head. So, uh, yeah, silly little things like that can be very costly. Sister car in the hands of Nick Perkat is currently in 12th place and they had real hopes of a good result here. They were in the top 10, Ollie Gavin and, and Nick Perkat yesterday. And they've been making some, some good ground with that car. Steve Rinsett's made uh, awesome start. Uh, managed to get down to turn one first, lead the, uh, after the safety car as well, and 
beautiful job just controlling it and looking after it. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. It's probably the first time since I've been a Red Bull I've, I've had that opportunity to actually get out there and drive the car, you know, as fast as I can. Under drive. no pressure. Under, under no pressure. So <laughs> it was it was great, really good. The car, the car, we've made a small tweak to it overnight, and it's definitely improved, improved at the curb riding and stuff. So. Um, you know, it's great. Good, good start. That was a great day yesterday, mate. Looking a little bit better today, so good Thanks. luck with it. Thanks, man. Craig Lowndes made some noise in the lead-up to this about wanting to keep that combination together to keep Stephen Richards with him for the endurance races next season. You would have to say, based particularly on the last two races this weekend at Mount Panorama Bathurst, where they took victory, it's absolutely worth keeping them together. Lowndes with the fastest lap of the race, a 1.11.9.0. He trails Dean Fiore by 12.4 seconds, and he's ahead of McLaughlin by over 1.2. It's only barely hanging together in the front right-hand corner of Jason Bright's car there as well, and uh, Bright's down in 23rd position, so guys that have had extra tours in the pit lane for reasons they prefer, not Blanchard and Bright. Uh, and Heimgartner as a result of what happened to Ant Pedersen a little bit earlier. Uh, Will Davison's also talking about the car behaviour in car nine. He's in 15th at the moment, saying the back of the car is not very nice. Down the inside, James Moffat, and uh, that's fourth position on Nick Perkett. He's up to 12th now as a result of that move in the Nissan. So, OK, now I know why. I thought it had just fallen apart. It didn't fall apart. It got ripped apart. So Bright's actually clouded that tyre bundle in the middle of uh, turn eight. Very similar images to the ones that we saw yesterday for Michael Caruso and also for Alex Kremer. And that's definitely going to turn into a problem for him. Dale Wood, right rear corner. And uh, this is a place where there's just extreme load. Wait till you see the movement down here. The damper velocity at these chicanes gets upward of a metre a second. So huge, huge impact. Bang, 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 bang. Just amazes me. It particularly amazes me with the stadium trucks that you can actually create equipment that can take this level of pounding. In fact, a gentleman asked me earlier in the day, does this stuff all get beefed up for here? But the cars hit curbs in lots of locations on the tour, so they have to be able to withstand it. But for the wishbones, for the anti-roll bar mechanism, for the tow link, for everything you can see under there, just even for the damper and the damper shaft and all those little rod ends to be able to cope with that load. First of all, it's knowledge that's been accumulated over decades of motorsport, but never ceases to amaze me when you look at them, just how robust they are and how they can just pound around all day. And in, two weeks ago at Bathurst, it's for a thousand kilometres. Unbelievable images. Here's Cameron Waters, currently in 19th place, taken over from Russell Ingle. Meantime, Lowndes and McLaughlin are trading some quick laps. 111.90 Lowndes, 111.96 from McLaughlin. Russell Ingle, mate, uh, that's the end of the Endurance Championship. I just want to know if you've got anything lined up for a Pukekohe, other than commentating. Well, I... Uh... I saw Gary Rogers on uh, on Friday when I was walking down Pit Lane. I said, if you've got anything going in the next three rounds, that way I've covered most of the bases. So uh, he just laughed and said, leave it with me. So <laughs> you never know. How was your run, mate? Uh, yeah, mate. We, ever since we rolled the, um, the rig out of the truck, we've just been struggling for pace here. It's the, um, it's the car, because they, they obviously didn't have uh, very much time to put this one together. So it's the... Um, it's a two girls car from Bathurst, and uh, they said to him, it's a little bit on the weighty side. It's actually one of the first uh, Car of the Future cars that uh, ProDrive built, so she's been hanging around a while, but uh, just struggling for pace a little bit. You know, Cam, Cam Waters saying the same thing, just really can't get that extra sort of about three or four tenths we need. Guys at the front running so quick. I mean, running mid 12s at this stage is damn fast, you know, so we're running sort of high 12, 13s, so and that ain't good enough. Mate, anyway, it was a good run, a couple of races there, and uh, welcome back. Oh, it's been fun. Welcome back to the pit lane and doing commentary. <laughs> it's a lot cooler, I can tell you. So. <laughs> Russell Ingle. That's the same car that David Reynolds used to win in 2013 in the Harvey Norman Supergirls car, and then this is the 
expected second stop here for Team BOC for Jason Bright to patch up that damage in the front right hand corner and uh, probably lucky they did that although they ended up with the complete under tray out of the car or getting black flag at some point so here's the sister car in that operation car number 14 and Fabian Coulthard here he's on the move next year has been detailed several times this weekend two car operation for Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske he's got Rick Kelly in behind him who yesterday was a little wilder with the strategy play he was one of only a few drivers that did the double stick with the soft tyre uh, but today they've gone for a more standard play. They're in uh, 16th and 17th at the moment. Meantime, here we are with three, uh, 33 in third is what I tried to spit out. So McLaughlin here, not terribly far from the back of Craig Lowndes, who in actual fact, in reality, is really the, the corrected leader. It's an eight and a half second margin to Dean Fiore, who's out of sequence because he stopped early to get a little dose of fuel. And they've sent Jason Bright back out the pit lane. He's just gone past our commentary box super middle sector which backs up your point about McLaughlin look how close he is here to Craig Lowndes Lowndes has got the quickest lap of the race so far and Russell said it a moment ago about the pace Good up work, front mate. that's your best middle sector and lapping in the 1 minute 11 the okay. and it's a genuine fight between these guys you hear Scotty say is the splitter okay because remember, from a driver's point of view, it's very, very difficult to know. And it's only going to be a few millimetres one way or the other that makes the difference between being OK and not. Now, they took on the same amount of fuel in their stop. So this is a genuine battle at the moment. And they're trading very quick laps. And you can see that he's... Yeah, Cal reckons be a little bit careful on that bundle, mate. Richard Holway, engineer. And Richard's got the presence of mind to not respond until he knows that Scott's in a straight line and just pulling gears rather than talking to him in the braking area or mid-corner getting closer fuel window for these guys gets them out as far as lap 78 or thereabouts and for Fiore who's still in the lead gets him out to about 55 56 he's good in that middle sector Scott particularly down along the beachfront through that back chicane he makes some good ground there so it's point nine between them Depending how much these hard tyres degrade in this sequence, the reason I wanted to talk about how far they could go on fuel here is they don't have to. The critical lap, the get home point is from lap 61. Not very far away from now. Once they get to that point, they can fuel up and get home without further stops. That's a little bit of a mirror back of uh, one of the Volvos. Pace is one of the backers of uh, the Wilson Security Volvo entry. So when I say one of the Volvos, it's got to be the Volvo because uh, Car 34 went out early in the game. Dean Fiore's come in now, by the way. So that leaves Lowndes and McLaughlin as the actual leaders. And that's down to now 0.9 of a second. Good place if you're one of those mirror makers or mirror cover makers, isn't it? We go through yeah. quite a few of them over the weekend. I saw you there last night with your little <laughs> card table and chair just selling mirrors to needy race teams. Look at it, look at it. Scott's there. Then you can actually see it on the right hand side so um, all there is now is the frame, the mirror frame there without the, the body on it so it's just waving to the crowd unnecessarily so, uh, he's worked that margin down uh, but there's a bit of caution being exercised from the pit lane, they're just saying be very careful on that tyre bundle, we don't want to repeat of what happened yesterday and you can see there she looks at the second hand coming up to the point where they could get their next load of fuel in. The primary drivers will stay in the cars, but they will go onto a soft tyre. Now, for some people, they'll get a gain, and that's actually the mirror itself. Isn't that bad luck? Someone's doing something with the cracked mirrors. I don't know. I don't, know. don't ask me. Here we go. We're back. Stop number three now for Team BOC, Jason Bright. And that was a really big whack that we saw before. And uh, the gentleman in the yellow and black Outfit is uh, Noel Kelly, the senior engineer at Dunlop. He's having a look there as well just to make sure there's no tyre damage, corresponding tyre damage. Back to car number 47, Tim Slade. He's got Winterbottom in front of him. He's got David Reynolds right behind. Yesterday, Reynolds was on the podium, the mighty drive for P2. Qualifying's hurt him a little bit more today. He's in the top 10. Remember, he's in a good championship battle and position here at the moment as well. He's third in the championship. Frosty's our leader. 
Lowndes is second and consolidating. So from a championship perspective at the moment, you've got Lowndes leading and Winterbottom in sixth place. So there'll be another little loss of points if they were to stay as they are, but not nearly the leakage that we saw yesterday for Mark Winterbottom when they lost the 93 point swing in their battle with the Red Bull car with Craig Lowndes. Incidentally, Michael Caruso at the wheel of car 23 now. He has taken over from Fiore and is now in 20th spot. Well, is that uh, damage to the bottom of uh, car rates under tray is uh, substantial. So I'm not sure how, how much longer that's going to stay there, but also the brake duct okay, is safety damaged. Car, so safety car, boards and flanks. Oh, safety, safety car, here we go. So I'll just put you back on it. Safety car. 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 Safety car.
Lowndes and Scott McLaughlin. This will close them up anyway. But the big thing here is that unless we get a lot more safety cars, these guys are not going to be getting home on fuel from here. It'd be impossible. They, they will need a splash and dash. Word from Warren Luff on uh, the performance of car two when he came in and then handed over to Garth Tander. The car was decent, but our pace didn't reach its full potential because we were stuck behind Marcus, battling with Marcus there. His stint. Another thing we should keep an eye out for here is those towards the back of the train. I'd be coming back in and sticking fuel in and doing it on repeat. And do everything you can to cheat the scenario here. I don't literally mean cheat, but <laughs> to, to cheat the inevitable, which is you're going to be fuel starved here. So do everything. They'll be running them in the highest gears at the moment with the lowest percentage throttle as they all crunch numbers and try to work out is the mirror off the Volvo being retrieved? There's bits everywhere. So, just keep a bit of an eye out as they come back down the pit lane here as to whether anybody reacts. I wouldn't be doing it when you're up near the front of the field when you lose track position. But if you're down the back, what it could do is give you a position later in the race and you'll vault over people who may have to come back in and grab some fuel. Lowndes is the leader over McLaughlin. People that got hurt in that process there were Courtney and Wincup. They had to double stack. And you expect to hear a call on race management channel any tick of the clock for a penalty for car number 17. What a shame for those guys. And the race director Tim Schenken's on the radio at the moment talking about dealing with this signage issue at turn four. And uh, Will Davison's just been informed that they don't think he can make it to the end. So on their numbers, they're going to have to do a little splash to get home. He said he was worried about economy earlier in, in the day, potentially, just based on what they'd seen yesterday. He's more worried about it now after that radio call. <laughs> so here we go. So I knew they'd do it at BJR because that's a, very much a Bradley ploy. So they know that having made three unnecessary stops into the pit lane to deal with the damage to the front of that car, that they'd just top it up. That'll have the effect of vaulting them up the order. They're not going to get much out of this, by the way, but there's, what, two, three cars in there? Kelly, Bright and Walsh. It's only going to be a few litres. Todd Kelly, Jason Bright and should. Ash Walsh have taken the opportunity for a top-up of fuel. Let's look at this here. I don't think that uh, Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske, they had their gear unnecessarily poorly managed there. It looked like it was in the right spot, ready to service their car. Maybe you could argue the case. So that may also have implications for car number 21 there as well, as Dale Wood came in. Because the teams are responsible for their, uh, for their own equipment. But uh, if someone else clobbers it, that's an interesting question. Uh, Scotty Sinclair uh, here at Nissan Motorsport. The 23, you guys played a little bit of a different strategy with that. Ran uh, Fiore just a little bit longer, got some fuel on it and put the soft tyre on at that first stop. Everyone now is on the soft tyre. You guys have actually put yourselves in a pretty good spot here. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's paid off at this point because he's only done a couple more laps as well. And then, so our fuel loss won't be too great and we're on the same tyre as everyone else. So it's, uh, it's worked out all right at the moment. Sometimes you just got to try and roll the dice a little bit and hope for a safety car. It has worked in this situation. We certainly rolled the dice yesterday and it didn't work, so hopefully today it pays off. Uh, good on you for having a crack. Thanks, man. Jonathan Webb, it's all very calm in this part of the garage at the moment. Little Judd having lots of fun there, but um, pretty hectic couple of minutes just there. But the, uh, the advantage of you guys, you had priority on the racetrack, which meant you benefited from that pit stop. Yeah, thankfully it went our way this time. We all saw a bath as how it did go our way. So, and we knew from the start that uh, Marcus would probably be trying to hunt me down. But, you know, thankfully the car was pretty good again. We were able to stay in front. And, you know, the, uh, the AAA boys stack, which has helped this one as well. There's a bit of chat at the moment about whether there's going to be a need fuel conservation, given that everyone had to pit a little bit early than what was probably expected. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it was about eight or ten laps early. So quite a lot. I mean, obviously there's safety cars are longer one than we thought, which is going to help. But uh, it'll definitely be a tight one at the end. You boys had an awesome victory yesterday. You're in a, a pretty nice position at the moment. There's a bit of discussion about whether this will be your last chance driving with Shane. But then a question popped up yesterday whether you'll revisit driving with him next year. 
Yeah, I think something came out last night. It was only someone else asked me this morning. I didn't even realise. But, no, for us it's great. You know, obviously signed on Will last week, which is great to let that out and let everything go. And focus on that. What I do is the next thing. Once you get through today, then it probably gives me a bit more time to, you know, sit down and think about what I want to do. Thanks, Jonathan. Good luck with this one. Thank you. It's going to be a fascinating conclusion to this race because key runners... They're, they're trapped. They can't sacrifice their track position. They're driving around at the moment with the lowest of low throttle percentages. They haven't made it to the get home position. They've filled the cars up. Remember the critical lap in our Wilson Storage Tech Centre race facts yarn a bit early at the beginning of the race? It's about lap 61. We're not there yet. Here's the scenario with the Pertec points, by the way. How's this? A nine point swing in favour of Tander and Luff at the moment, just barely over Lowndes and Richards. And so that's a long way from resolved in all three of those positions at the moment. And based on yesterday afternoon too, it's uh, an improvement for Lowndes and Richards and just very close there is Winterbottom and Owen. So Courtney came in there and did what I mentioned a few moments ago because he also got hurt having to stack behind uh, Garth Tander. He's come in and grabbed a little bit of extra fuel hoping that they'll get a benefit out of that correction later. But here we go, we're racing once again. This is going to be an economy run for some. If there's another safety car, they will get out of jail. Nice work, Lowndes leads them as we get the Gold Coast 600, the final race of the weekend, back underway. Look at them through this first chicane. Up the inside comes Shane Van Gisbergen on 23. That's Michael Caruso. Short that is the third place. Pit lane penalty, car 17 for an unsafe pit release. Confirmation of what we expected, which was after contact with the Jack Daniels car. And look at uh, Percat getting stuck into it there. That was pretty wild. So uh, after that uh, unsafe release for car number 17, they'll unfortunately have to come back into the lane, contact with the Nissan. Lowndes, McLaughlin, Van Gisbergen, Caruso. Wind Cup just grabbed a spot. People using the opportunity in the restart when tyres are cold and gaps exist, try and make a quick gain. So that was an opportunistic move there for Wind Cup. Racing team talking about that decision to bring James Courtney in for that fuel. Big strategy call. They're rolling the dice with the 22. Car 17, Scott Pye comes in for that penalty. And yeah, that's going to put, because the field's compressed, very disappointing moment for Marcus Ambrose, whose drive was very good today. Uh, it's going to put him right at the very back of the field because of the field compression after the restart. So very, very hard news in there. So here we go. Now, these guys have got to perform a little magic. They have to make lap speed and not use fuel. And that is not an easy task. Interesting battle going on here with Percat. He's in a battle with Moffat and Reynolds. Oh, that was awkward. Turn 11. So close to getting turned around there for Tim Slade in this battle with James Moffat. Here they are again at 12. A bit more rat-a-tat-tat -tat through 12. James has been fired up this weekend, hasn't he? He's announced that he's leaving this team at the end of the season. He says, I know where I'm going for 2016, and it's a great opportunity, but he has not rolled off the throttle in the Altima. Look at this. Wind Cup got by Caruso, then Tanda down the inside as well. So Tanda's gone with him. So Gas looking racy today as he was yesterday. It was a fourth for him yesterday. He had that big battle with James Courtney. Lots of people spoke about that yesterday and last night. No saving of fuel. Eyes forward it was for Craig Lowndes. Just go racing. Don't worry about the fuel later. So they either know that they've got to take the stop or they know that uh, there's going to be another safety car, in which case they're really good at fortune telling and I'll go and talk to them about lotto <laughs> numbers a little bit later on. Just on James Courtney with that top up. He's in 18th place. You saw him in the background there. A moment ago, Lowndes by 0.7 over McLaughlin, then Van Gisbergen. Brilliant yesterday, super performance by Techno. They said this morning, polish it and send it. That was a good car on Saturday, 
leave a good thing alone. Like stack, the unsafe release. You've had nine years of just wasting guys on pit lane and it's been a free-for-all. It's not cool, it's ruined your race. No, we've got a few drop lips in uh, the Xbox camp right now, but I really enjoyed my lads. I had a blast out there. We're not going to win the race now, but you know, Scott's going to keep trucking on here, see what we can get. He'll have steam coming out of his ears. He's a pretty fired up guy, so we might see some lap times out of the dude now. Yeah, look, he's a great young driver, and uh, yeah, he's going to be cranky out there, no doubt about it, but uh, you know, it's just this double stack thing. It's just, for me, coming from America, it just, it, it's just a strange deal and it just ruined our race. So um, that's the way it goes. I'm with you. What's the cure to it? Do we shut the pit lane down? What do we do? You, you've seen how it can be done and how pit lane can be a really good competition, but it must be frustrating, man. Yeah, I'm not going to get all political right now, no, mate. But tell us what you think. There are solutions to it. You're not coming back, mate, so tell us what you think. <laughs> this is the only sport in the world, only racing sport in the world that does this double stack thing, and I don't get it. Yeah, it's not good. We should fix it, mate. Maybe you should go on the board. Well, <laughs> get away, Paul. You're, you're going to ruin my day here. <laughs> OK, mate. <laughs> Scott's currently in 21st position in the number 17. Both one Marcus Ambrose. People are going to pit Rusty, so expect... I just heard the call for car 14. Some people are going to do it early. So they're going to get themselves sorted, calculated. Here's a little replay of what happened here between uh, James Moffat and uh, car number 47, Tim Slade. Clean move this time. It started with a good run through the chicane. Five's in as well. Winterbottom's in as well. So Winterbottom and Kultan are in the lane. They're going to grab some fuel here. This is going to get massively complicated to keep an eye on what everyone's doing. But the benefit for these guys is clear air and fuel. Okay, reset fuel, reset fuel. Go, 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 go. Nice clean exit there for Winterbottom. Lance has got a margin of one second over McLaughlin. Then it's Gizzy, Wincup, Tander. People are pressing on hard. McLaughlin was very quick in the third sector there before. And so the benefit for those guys that you just saw departing the pit lane is clear air. And look at this little battle starting to bubble up. Point four between them. Van Gisbergen in third in car 97. Win Cup in fourth. And the Red Bull. So these guys are going to do the same thing with one. And I think the Nissan's come in as well. Uh, I think that was Moffat in the background. It's going to do the same thing. He has come in. So more fuel. So people dealing with it now so that they don't have to worry about it later. Also looking to get a benefit out of the undercut on those new or relatively new soft tyres. So clear air, good grip, solve your fuel problem, pull the trigger. So you can hear Dutto talking Mark Dutton about fresh air. And it's a box call also for Will Davison. And that's Scott Pye having to tour through the traffic island there to avoid potential contact. So car nine, expect them in as well, out of position number 10 for Will Davison. He's determined to get that spot, Jamie Wincup. And Scott Pye knew it. Watch this Penrite Mercedes here. It's quite a bunch, quite a group. Push, push, and then box also for Van Gisbergen. And so they're going to do the same with Gizzy in car number 97. Comes Will, 10th position. Reynolds is in. And Davison in. Meantime, Lowndes and McLaughlin can continue in this brutal battle. It's only 0.9 of a second between them. Todd Kelly's come in as well in the Nissan. Here's David. Gives them back end of the top 10. It's just fuel. Young, soft tyres on that car. So push hard and then box, expect. That was the message to, as Moffat straight lines, that was the message to Van Gisbergen. So we'll keep an eye out for Gizzy. So it's box, box, box was the command a moment ago for Van Gisbergen. Reynolds ahead of Winterbottom in that group there. Oh. 
Lance has just done the personal best sector for him in the third sector. And look at how hard Wind Cup is pushing here. Plucks the mirror back off the left-hand side of car one. And he's familiar with that car reading wall. That was the one that grabbed him on Friday morning. Here's Gizzy. Cleaning the screen. Whacking some United E85 in it. Holdsworth and Waters in as well. He's got to wait. That's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. Remember that Waters is going to peel off. There was a second, maybe two, in caution there. But the caution's worthwhile. The contact puts him out of business. Third sector wasn't a splash for Wind Cup. Brilliant in the middle sector, though. Here we go. Wind Cup's in front of him. That's actually hurt a little bit. Created uh, some interest, hasn't it? So that safety car really threw. Remember, I said at the very beginning of the race in the tech center, be wary today of safety car interventions and the way in which the weather inf uh, impacts this race and who thinks on their feet quick. Now, watch this for a bit of presence of mind. The car controller's gone, no, wait, that was going to be a disaster. That would have been contact right in the B pillar of Lee Holdsworth. Most in everyone's mind after that contact yesterday between Garth Tander and Mark Winterbottom when Winterbottom was released into the lane. Costly day. It's Lowndes by just over a second on McLaughlin and Tander. And uh, tear off has left the wipers sticking straight up and saluting the crowd. It's going to be a big issue at the moment. He's our race leader. He's got one second over McLaughlin, who's pushing super hard at the moment. These guys keep lighting up the individual sectors around the track with personal best. So it's a qualifying performance from these guys at the moment. Maximum attack for both Lowndes and McLaughlin. Tanders in third place at the moment from Caruso, then Slade, then Percat. Other people are playing a strategic game. This is going to be very interesting. Lowndes is in. So Lowndes is in car number 888. That leaves McLaughlin in the lead. Fastest lap of the race belongs to Lowndes at 111.7 before he pitted. Who's he come out with? There's uh, Brighty's car second hand. Still got problems in that front right hand corner. Just a splash. That was the word from the team. That was rubber. The build up of soft rubber from under the car. Craig Lowndes. Here we are with Scotty McLaughlin, leader of the race. He's lit up some good sectors too. Personal best as he tries to hustle this car. He's about to make the same play. Good rhythm, mate. Good pace. Yeah, okay. Um, Travis, tear off at the next stop, please. Tear off. So McLaughlin's asking for one of those transparencies to be removed from the front windscreen of the car as well. Can I have a tear off? There's going to be a lot of garbage on it, and there's a lot of glare on the run through turn 12 into the final complex of corners at this time of day. You can see Gary Rogers in the pit box there a moment ago behind him. Billy Gibson as well from Gibson Freight. Those boys will be busy in the coming days. We get set to ship our equipment, our cars, to Auckland for the ITM 500. Next stop on the tour. So what are they going to do here with Volvo? Keep an ear on their radio as well. It's McLaughlin, Tanda, Caruso, Slade, Percat. Of course, if there's a safety car happens to arrive on the scene any time now, then all those that stop have put themselves down the order for track position. And this is the knife edge Just of the game. To, uh, so 5.3 seconds it is McLaughlin to Tanda. And then Caruso in third position. It's a Volvo, a Holden, a Nissan, and then another Holden with Tim Slade in fourth. I have heard the voice of Paul Morris there a moment ago. They're going to crack on by the sounds of it. Scott McLaughlin and Volvo for now. 111.96 last time by for car 33. He leads from Tanda. Caruso. <laughs> Will this work for Caruso? We derive data from the timing and the 
stationary time of the cars and, and projections based on the information that we know the cars achieve around here with fuel burns. And at the moment, the fuel window closes for McLaughlin and Tander at lap 100, as it does for Slade and as it does for Reynolds and many others. The lap 100. That's a lovely number and it's nice and round. Problem is it's a 102 lap race. So they've come in for Dale Wood. Was in the top 10 with that car. So there goes Woody back out and rejoins. 5.2 seconds between McLaughlin and Tanda and Caruso, who are potentially fuel starved at the moment. And Slade, these guys cannot make it home. And the only way that those fellows can make it home is if they can find some miracle method of saving a lot of fuel or there's a safety car intervention. So we've got two very different plays starting to unfold here. Some that have blinked and put fuel in their cars. Others are just gonna press on and see what happens here at the moment. Average fuel burn, back to what we said in the tech center a little bit early on, it's about 2.65 liters. So you're going to need about five and a bit liters to do those other couple of laps. So here's Lowndes, they blinked at Red Bull Racing Australia. Put fuel in taking a tear off. McLaughlin's asked for a tear off if they come in as well in car number 33. Meantime, this is James Courtney on the march. He's now up into sixth place. That was Rick Kelly that he dispatched on the run here to turn 11. The bumper cam view from Rick Kelly's car. Nice move, Courtney. Cam Waters, car number six. He's down in 19th at the moment. Not a millimetre to spare on the exit of turn two and three. Less than 31 laps to go in this race now. McLaughlin by 5.1 over Tanda and Caruso. And Neil talking there about the available fuel left and the amount of laps to run in this one. And what about Michael Caruso and Dean Fiore in third spot? They started today out of position 24 in that okay, Nissan, currently third. They're pitting him. So they're pitting McLaughlin for fuel. Where is he relative to Lowndes? He's 36 seconds up the road. It takes 34 seconds for an entry, transit and departure. Bit of fuel. It's going to be maybe a second or two in this. This is going to be an absolute nail biter, folks. This guy's going to have to squeeze every last millimetre out of this thing through 12. Pitch it through 13. Drive it like a maniac up into the final complex and then arrive with perfection and lob right on the marks in the pit lane. If he overshoots, if they have to shuffle all the tooling, that'll cost him. This is a very important stop for Volvo. Race control also looking at the position of 99 and 55, Reynolds and Moffat. Here comes Lowndes. There's the tear off that he asked for. Two lanes clear and the car drops, you're good. Craig's on the run to the final corner. Go, 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 go. This is going to be so close. And driving down here with the pit lane speed limiter engaged at 40 kilometres an hour will feel like an eternity. That's a lap car. Lowndes is going to emerge from underneath the coat's yeah, higher side. Any right, tick of the clock. Here he comes. No worries, mate. No worries. He's going to get clipped. Lowndes through. Yeah, it should be clear up around the mate. Yeah, all good, all good, mate. So here's the battle to the end. Oh, he might even... No, he might survive Wind Cup just. But he's got to get back in rhythm quickly. He's got the benefit, of course, of warm tyres. Meantime, Tander's now the leader of the race. He's got 1.1 seconds. And Tander's fuel window on our numbers, based on best estimate, is lap 100. Two laps shy of the mark, there he is. And there is the man that he's racing, Michael Caruso, who yesterday had a difficult day. I heard him on the radio saying, I don't want to press on. Why are we pressing on? They put Dean Fiore back in the, in the car. To change position. 99 is to go behind 55. There's 99, uh, some laps to go. Shortcut uh, turn two. Uh, 
when 55 was exiting the pits, it gained from that move maneuver. So 99 is to reverse positions with 55. And they are in 13th and 14th, and Tim Schenken, the race director, talking about James Moffat and David Reynolds. We're riding with David, and that's James in the foreground. So can Tanda save five odd litres of fuel? <laughs> Can Caruso save five odd litres? You need to, oh, and another little moment down there. So it's all going on around here. We're looking at numbers. We're looking at race cars. We're looking at replays. People are looking at their fuel numbers. It's so, so hard when you're in the bunker trying to figure out how to play all this stuff. That's and uh, James Moffat is melting my radio at the moment. So it's not G-rated recommended listening at the moment. It's been sorted though. And Reynolds moves back ahead, back into 13th place behind Shane Van Gisbergen, then Pye ahead of them. But it's Tanda by 1.4 over Caruso, then Tim Slade. Nick Perkat is currently fourth. And James Courtney rounds out the five. Remember, Courtney made that splash and dash. And this is where the calibration of your telemetry matters. Look at James Moffat, he's angry and he's making sure that his feelings are well known to David Reynolds and everybody watching. Lowndes is eighth, McLaughlin is ninth. They've got a big battle going. It's four seconds between them at the moment. But those that are further ahead in this queue, are they running the Gortland or do they blink and come in and grab fuel? Check the attitude of Moffat's car. He is fired up in car 99. He's in 14th place and hustling as he chases David Reynolds here. Reynolds on the podium yesterday. There's a lot of laps remaining. So you just never know in this weird caper. And you would not bet against a safety car intervention. Get one early yesterday. We got it late in the game. Good laps for Nick Perkat here as well. Best we've seen from him in this race so far. 112-3-3. He's fourth in the order. The trick is you have to save on my little calculator here 196 millilitres of fuel every lap. So think about it in terms of your favourite soft drink. So half a can every lap if you can do it and still be fast. Guys, I'm just uh, going to squeeze in here and tap Richard Holloway in the shoulder, giving Scotty McLaughlin all the information. Mate, we're just trying to do some of the calculations ourselves. You came in, put some fuel in to get to the finish. You weren't confident, even with the safety car, that you had enough? Nah, no way, mate. No. You put in, what did you get in there, four or five laps worth of fuel? Yeah, it's about six seconds, mate. Yeah, yep. OK, thanks, buddy. Well, just I know that you don't want any distractions right now, but how long will you leave Garth out there, or are you just praying for a safe start? Uh, look, we know we need a stop with GT. Uh, at the moment, we think he's going to come out behind uh, Winker, but which is fine. But the, the more, the bigger one we're looking at is James. James doesn't need a stop. Um, he's got a very small margin. Uh, he's got to keep this pace up. Uh, Blanchard and uh, Lounsey are the other ones behind him that have. They're, you know, our threat. So uh, you know, we're in a good position at the moment, but still a long way to go, which I always remind you, don't I? You do. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you. Took that splash of fuel under safety car, didn't he, James Courtney? Yep. And that can make a difference because his window on our numbers at the moment closes at lap 101. That's close enough to argue the point, which is what Adrian is pointing out there. So, you know, when you're arguing about a couple of litres of fuel, it's very dependent on how James uses the throttle. If he upshifts 500 revs or more early, if he doesn't flip the throttle on the downshift, if he short shifts, careful on those downshifts and thinks carefully about it, he might be able to make it fly. The other guy that's actually strategically in good shape at the moment is car number three, Tim Blanchard. So that explains the penalty for Moff. sounded from Adrian's answer that they pretty much know that unless there's a safety car, they're going to have to, there's no way that they can actually save that fuel for Garth. Mind you, wouldn't be the first time that there's been a ripple go up and down pit lane. <laughs> it's not necessarily correct. <laughs> 
that has implications for the Perth Second Giro Cup. He led he and Warren Luff for the Perth Second Giro Cup coming in today. What implications will that have if they don't get a safety car? If they can't get this car home, as it currently stands, as leader of the pack, Garth Tander. Michael Caruso, 2.7 behind. We drift back to this lot here. Lowndes is in position eight, and Scott McLaughlin in the Volvo is ninth. Then Jamie Wincup hustling, chasing. Does he brush the wall a little bit then with what's left of that mirror? So James Moffat is still pretty animated on the radio. And uh, that's quite a few laps ago now, so just needs to trigger the fire extinguisher there and cool down for a minute. Meantime, interestingly enough, and he had that trouble earlier with the window net, if you recall, Tim Blanchard is actually in a very good position here at the moment. He's seventh. And I don't think fuel's a major drama for him. Telling on board before as well for James Courtney. I reckon all the things you were warning about, cautioning about he was doing in the way he was driving, trying to save that little bit extra. That tells you the attitude of James Moffat at the moment. Fired up about that redress with David Reynolds. He's 14th, but he's pushing on in car 99, attacking the streets of surface paradise. Shane Van Gisbergen just asked for somebody to get out of the way or get, tell him to get out of the way. So he's a bit animated there at the moment. He's buried in 12th at the moment. He's in behind Scott Pye. So it's purely an assumption on my part. Here's Blanchard, purely an assumption, but because they're neighbours, maybe Van Gisbergen's asking if he can get past Scott Pye. So cool drive racing, Tim Blanchard. In a strategically good position just ahead of Craig Lowndes here. And uh, Alistair McVeigh is coaching on the Holden Racing Team radio at the moment giving him a fuel number to drive to for James Courtney in fifth place. Tim Blanchard's co-driver, Carl Reindler, had a cool suit issue yesterday. They're running in seventh at the moment. This is very good, but it's Tander by 3.2 from Caruso, and then Slade. Just uh, quickly, he's just having a chat to Grant McPherson, grab uh, Roland Dane very quickly. Uh, for a race that was looking quite standard, strategically it changed very, very quickly. You guys have put your two cars in, in a pretty good position. Courtney could be your only one out there that might play a bit of a, a card. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, Tanda's pushing as hard as, he, as hard as he can at the moment, ragging it. There might be a price to pay for that later. And if Courtney's running the 120 litre, nothing we can do. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, rolling. Uh, the, he's talking about 120 litres, he's talking about tank capacity. The cars have got a maximum capacity of 112. The usable fuel is about 110, so there's a couple of litres that's left in the lines. So, could be seeing a little bit of humour in it all at the moment. This is the battle that I've made reference to before. Van Gisbergen's been on the radio several times now, and I think it'll be, I'm only assuming, I didn't hear him name him, but he's asking for someone to be moved out of the way. So. One assumes it's Scott Pye and uh, Scotty's a neighbour. They're in the same garage. Well, okay, they're holding, mate. They're holding. There's the other one. There you go, mate. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Right, uh, so that cleans all that up. So that moves Van Gisbergen up to 11th position. And uh, Gizzy at the moment is 41 seconds from the lead. And going back, remember those pitting numbers. So if Tanda has to come in, it's 34 odd seconds and a bit of fuel. Okay, buddy, 22 laps. Just over. over on half a second a lap. 20 laps to go. This is going to be a thriller. Coffee, so Jeff Slater on the radio, giving the scenario. Steve Hallam, very senior, well established senior engineer with Formula One and NASCAR credentials. He loves the strategy game in motorsport. Yesterday was a great yield for those guys. It's a small team and they've been punching above their weight. Tandon, Caruso, 3.3 seconds. Then Slade, then Percat, then Courtney, then Kelly, then Lowndes. Tandon's right on the edge with fuel. Good job, Easy car behind position now. 
Slater on the cusp for fuel. Perkett's on the cusp. Rick Kelly's on the cusp. So is Pi. Pi might just make it. Courtney might just make it. Mark Dutton encouraging Jamie Winkup. At the moment, Jamie's in 10th. That's McLaughlin in the foreground. And Gisbergen's already made some space between himself and, and Scott High. So chasing, Shane chasing Jamie Winkup. Jeff Slater's telling Shane Van Gisbergen, the cars in front of you are starting to struggle. You're gaining on them at the rate of half a second a lap. This is Tanda going by the ailing Jason Bright, the Team BOC entry. Oh, a little mistake for Tanda. Leads by 3.71 over Caruso. You can see Michael in the background there. Numbers of the last stop in terms of fuel for those guys. Courtney just driving that car 22 along in fifth place. Is he in good shape for this one? Look at this big pressure here now on Blanchard. He's got McLaughlin all over him. And Scotty goes down the inside at turn four. Wind Cup's going to get into this as well. Four position up to eight now for McLaughlin. So, Lowndes the, is the first of them that's really what, got what you would describe as safe fuel, Rusty. He's in seventh, as is McLaughlin. You can see them on... Yes, done. So, uh, wind cup cleanly through there on Blanchard. And then there's this tantalising question over the remainder in front. Guys, I'm just uh, standing at the end of the pit lane and we were talking about James Courtney saving fuel before he's just gone past. You should hear how he's coming out of that throttle, how early he is coming out of that throttle and just rolling the HRT 22 into Turn 1, saving as much fuel as he can. But it's very obvious at the moment. On our computer simulation, Murph, he's gone to the top of the corrected order. But it will be line ball, so rolling out of that throttle early grabbing those gears a fraction early, that could help the cause. So if he's able to come back from three months away, look at Van Gisbergen down the inside of Blanchard. And after a, a ropey day yesterday with a bit of team, inter-team rivalry to come back and potentially grab a win on the Sunday, that'd be a mighty story. But it's a long way from done. Van Gisbergen was three seconds faster than Blanchard last time around. Partying on the roof at Service Paradise. And the party will start after this race is run as well. The final one for the weekend in the Castrol Gold Coast 600. Lowndes is 35 seconds from Tanda. Lowndes is fuel safe. If Tanda stops, it's going to cost that and a bit. James Courtney took on a splash of fuel during the safety car and he's been nursing, stroking car 22 along, trying to conserve fuel. Greg Murphy reporting from pit lane before that you can hear the way that he's driving it. In the queue, he's currently fifth. Will it be enough to get home and maybe win this Sunday race here at Surface Paradise? Amazing story if he does it back from injury, broken ribs, a punctured lung. He's been away from the game since August at Sydney Motorsport Park. What a return, what a story that would be. Another thing that's going to help people in this interesting smoking calculator Grand Prix that we've got going at the moment is they've had to run the soft tyre for a much wider, longer window than we expected or that they would have wanted to. That means that as they get nearer the end of the tyre life, lap speed is going to decrease or increase depending on how you want to look at that. But anyway, they're going to get slower. Better to express it that way. Which means they'll use a little less fuel. So there's also going to be a little question mark over walking wounded on tyres here as well. They'll see the distance through, but some of them won't be in terribly good shape towards the end of it. So that's just another thing to keep in the back of your mind as you plot the progress of your favourite driver out there.
Hey, mate, I reckon you're in good shape. Look, to me, you had to save about two kilos of fuel, which is about half of one of those a lap. I reckon he's done that now. When are you going to drop the hammer? Oh, look, we're not at the moment. We're going to get some insurance. Lowndes is, uh, you know, he's 18 seconds behind us, 17 laps to go. We, we took that safety car to top it up. We gave him a number, and he was on it from the word go, and he was still giving us 12-0. So the gap hasn't really shrunk to Lowndes, but we believe we got got about a kilo in the pot at the moment, but time will tell, mate. Roland reckons you can't do it, but I reckon you can. I've done the numbers. I reckon you're going to get it done. Just go back and tell him to watch, and we'll see yeah, what happens. Yeah, we will. <laughs> what a shame for Blanchard and Reindler. They were in the top ten, and a reoccurrence of that window net issue, which brought them into pit lane before. Oh. Back with James. While that interview was taking place between Paul and Adrian, they're on the phone to this man and really counselling judicious use of that fuel to the droplet. Trying to manage this on the corrected order for us. Showing number one. We'll be fine. Minus point one five. So that's Alistair McVeigh and on that number saying you'll be fine. Greg Murphy confirmed the early roll off into turn one. Garth Pand is actually the leader of the race. And on our corrected order, interestingly, we're seeing Courtney and Tander as a one-two. There's Blake Smith on the right, Alistair McVeigh on the left. They're working those radios hard there at the moment. Caruso still second. So Tander, Caruso, Slade, Percat, question mark Courtney and Kelly, all in some form or another with a bit of fuel pain. And then stopping earlier to get rid of that problem, seventh, eighth, Lowndes and McLaughlin, 9th Wing Cup, 10th Van Gisbergen. They cleared themselves of that issue so that they could run hard towards the end. Everybody's got tyre performance tapering at the back end of this window. They were forced to stop early by that additional safety car intervention on lap 54. Van Gisbergen's done a super job here, right on the back of Jamie Wing Cup. This is for ninth spot. And he's got the gap down to point three now. They'll be teammates next year, Van Gisbergen and Windcup at Red Bull. But on track at the moment, they're enemies. And Gizzy, oh, thought about it, that's contact. It was more than a thing. He actually went down there and rattled down the inside. So, tyres beginning to struggle is the question mark in my mind for Windcup. Shane's got to be a bit careful. And here we go at turn 11. And roars down the inside. This time, Jamie just leaves a little margin. Awesome move, Shane Van Gisbergen. And that is up into ninth position now. You can see McLaughlin just ahead of him in eighth in the Volvo. And 43 seconds from the lead. So 34 seconds for entry, transit and departure, plus your fuel. Taking Adrian Burgess's word, he says they've got to stick some fuel in Garth's car. And we understand too that Percat, of course, will have to stop. He's in the fourth. It's a nice move, wasn't it? Awesome. Michael Caruso. This would be an excellent outcome for these guys if they could stitch it together. But just as it is for Garth Tander, there's that big question mark in relation to fuel. Scott Sinclair, we're just having a conversation off camera about um, Rick Kelly and, and Michael Caruso. You, were, you seem fairly confident with Rick Kelly. Yeah, I was actually just asking uh, you whether the other guys were going to make it. No, we think we're all right at the moment. Um, Giovanni, our fuel guy, he is, uh, he's not sweating too many bullets at the moment, so we think we should be alright. Hopefully, uh, Michael's obviously got a pit, but he'll slot in uh, hopefully around the 10. But um, Rick, yeah, we hopefully can end up on the podium if the other guys have to stop. That's pretty huge effort considering after what was a pretty difficult start for Dave Russell, you guys dropped back to almost last position. Yeah, yeah, we've seen everything today. Uh, but Rick's done a great job saving fuel. He's saving a heap of fuel since that last restart, so hopefully it pays off. 
Good luck. Thanks. They started 14th today. They were outside the 20 at one point with David Russell as Rihanna Detail there. What a fight back this is if they can get this car onto the podium. Just looking at the numbers here to try and reverse engineer what it might be that Garth Tander and Michael Caruso need in the way of fuel. It's, it's very difficult because we're talking about these little fine amounts now and ours is best estimate on a dead reckoning basis, but it's probably in the order of about eight litres there or thereabouts, which means it's going to be somewhere in the order of two or three seconds of fuel plus the, the in and the out rejoining the timeline. So call it 37, 38 seconds. So we'll keep an eye on that margin as down the inside at turn 11 goes car number five, winner bottom. That's up to position number 13, passing Scott Pye for that. So 37, 38 seconds. Well, at the moment, Lowndes is spot on 38.6 seconds behind Tanda and Lowndes is in seventh. It's a nail biter. Uh, 21 here is Dale Wood. But we're keeping an eye on Tanda, who leads the field in car two. And only the teams really know the realities of their individual fuel burn. And they'll be guarding that information pretty carefully. Blake Smith on the radio. Box, box, mate. Box, box, box. Fuel that blinked. So they're in. Really critical stop. Really no need to say it. It's so vital this one. Again, got a stop on the marks. Massive amount of experience for Tanda. Okay, so Dean, yourself onto the board. Yeah. Splash it and go, mate. So that is very, very quick. Keep it in gear. Just managing clutch. 7 8 litres of fuel. Bang, he hit the spot pretty well. The timing the stop. Gone. That's all it took. That's all that was missing from the task. Can you believe it? And out he goes. So let's see where he ends up with Craig Lowndes. I said it was 38 seconds. He's out. So there you go. That's the scenario. Okay, buddy. Ten laps to run next time, by. Just nice and smooth and straight for us. Some guys in front going to run out of fuel, so head down, nice and smooth and straight. Ten laps to run. I'll explain this race here afterwards over a beer, mate. <laughs> Good. I might go and join in. Me too. <laughs> Tander is in sixth position. Rick Kelly ahead of them. You heard from Nissan Motorsport there a moment ago, hoping that Rick will finish on the podium here the way it's looking. We jumped aboard with James Courtney now. Is that Michael Caruso to the lane? Caruso in car 23 has come in as well. So Garth clearly saved a little bit more fuel than I was projecting, only a little. This is Caruso, tear off, maybe a second difference. Getting close. This has required a bit more fuel, hasn't it? Just visibly there for Michael. So Slade's the leader. Steve's car. There's Craig. Like a roll call. Oh, look at this little battle here. Van Gisbergen. Ahead of McLaughlin. Ahead of McLaughlin. Of course, these guys are going to be headline acts at the ITM 500 in Auckland in two weeks' time. Be massively popular. And they're both on form at the moment. <laughs> a little bit of inter-team action here as well. So contact between Caruso and Moffat out of turn four. Michael's rejoined in 12th spot. They started the race 24th today, he and Dean Fiore. Courtney is in third. He's right on the cusp here of maybe not requiring fuel. And Tander and Lowndes, that little exchange that we were monitoring, 17 and 22 seconds behind him. And everybody's starting to hurt and rubber. They're in the 13s now, mid 13s. So the soft tyres starting to get a bit second hand. And look at Van Gisbergen trying to sneak up the inside using a little bit better drive out of there. Because on that shot, before we saw this replay, I was like, oh, Van Gisbergen's in front of McLaughlin, and that's why. They've done a good job at Techno, it seems, of, of managing
managing tyres, haven't they? He's strong at this phase of the race, Van Gisbergen. Seventh, chasing Craig Lowndes now. He trails Lowndes by 3.7 seconds. Third on the Saturday here last year for Tony Delberto and Tim Slade. So the Walkinshaw cars in general terms, pretty racing today. Slade is the leader. Courtney is in third, Tanders in fifth. And it's remarkable that the exhaust headers on that car there, car number triple two, have survived all day without creating a secondary problem. We we'll just quickly sneak in here, Barry Hay. I know um, you don't want any distractions, your knees are shaking, but can you make it with Nick Perk out? Uh, mate, it's pretty touch and go, I tell you. Like, we're rolling the dice big time here, so we're about to make a decision the next lap and a half and work out what we can do. So we don't see a safety car by then, we're out. But when you're up this close, you have a pretty good go, I tell you. Got your fingers crossed for you, Barry. Thank you. Be a big result. It's worth the gamble. He's driving the wheels off it, isn't he? And on our numbers at the moment, it's saying he does need fuel. It's only a tiny splash, exactly like Garth Panda required. Admire the honesty there of, uh, of Barry Hay. You can hear the car there, and just like Jamie Wincup at Sydney Motorsport Park, it survived despite that header issue. Back to the race leader. Got 2.2 seconds in hand. Slade over Percat. And in. So I've decided to come and grab some fuel for Tim Slade. He's got a similar scenario going to what Garth right, Tander did. He I'm just up. needs a tiny running. bit of fuel. Give me size and we're going. Wait for me. Pull up on the mark, guys, please, mate. Waiting. All right, mate, pull over. Her cat's the go. leader. Nice and easy. Oh, yeah. He pulled up very accurately, Slade. Waiting for fuel. Let me see. Go, 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 go. Percat leads from Courtney, Rick Kelly, Garth Panda, Craig Lowndes, Shane Van Gisbergen and Tim Slade's going to drop back in here in front of Fabian Coulthard, probably around 13 or 14. Oh, oh trouble at the top end of the track. Three cars getting into it. Cam Waters, Dale Wood, Andre Heimgartner. They managed to resolve it just. Waters in 19th spot. Will the safety car that Barry Hay and the LD Motorsport team need materialise? Time running out for them. Courtney. Uh, they're going to bring 20, uh, car triple two in. I'll get it out in English. They're bringing him in. They've just called him for a short stop. So further to Barry's comment, he's in. So this is Moffat down the inside of Reynolds. That's for position uh, number nine. And that was Todd just clearing all these guys. And then it, it triggered this little bit of action here that went all the way to the last corner. We saw that before. So expect car triple two in any tick of the clock. That move by Moffat took him to ninth in the order ahead of David Reynolds. Here's Nick Perkat midway up the back straight. He's just been called for the second time. And he, he's exactly the same scenario as Slade and Tanda. He just needs a tiny splash of fuel to get him home. He's got a 2.1 second lead over Courtney. And those other cars that are in the fuel safe area, Lowndes, Van Gisbergen and so on, they're about 18 and 21 seconds behind. So this stop is going to drop him back down the order, but it sounds shocking, doesn't it? So Courtney will move to the top of the order with this stop for Nick Perkat and he'll lead by seven seconds right, over Rick Kelly. Nice and easy in here, we'll just give her a drink of juice and send her to Mary Way. Probably only give about five seconds, so you're not here for very long. Nothing in pit lane, we're worried about mate. All clear, all clear, all clear. Sounds like he's just about ready to play on paddock. <laughs> Gisbergen comes through. He's in sixth. Courtney's the leader. Rick Kelly's second. Garth Tander's third. Craig Lowndes is fourth. Van Gisbergen is fifth. Then McLaughlin, Wincup. Percat is going to drop in here. 11th between Caruso. Actually, make that 12th between Winterbottom and Slade. 
Kelly's taken about half a second out of James Courtney here. The gap is 6.5. Tan to third. One hand on that Pertec Enduro Cup. He and Warren Luff. On our numbers, the last car that's in this really what appears to be marginal zone is Rick Kelly. Our numbers are seeing James safe, but I don't reckon it quite is. That's Jack Jones. He's still got 6.4 to Rick. Four laps to go. Just watch the fuel lights in the next lap or so. And when those fuel lights come on, means they're getting into the collector. The collector has a maximum capacity of eight litres. You burn 2.65 litres of fuel on average per lap, but they're saving a bit at the moment because the tyres have gone away and they're deliberately making sure that they short shift and they don't flip throttle on the downshift and all of the other things that you might choose to do. It's not done yet, but it would be a special day for Jack Perkins if this car 22 comes home in first position, a breakthrough race win for Jack. And this is the Pertec provisional. The points would see Tanda and Luff lift the cup by 48 over Van Gisbergen and Webb. Winterbottom and Owen with the leaders coming in by 78. What a turnaround on the streets of Surface Paradise for this cup. Came to work this morning on the light rail on the G with Jack Perkins. We whizzed past our first stop and ended up further up the road, so we had to trudge into the circuit. <laughs> Were you the talking? Other end. There was lots of chat going on. He was pretty happy with the way the car worked. He's a great young man, Jack Perkins. He's a real aficionado of the sport. It'd be a wonderful victory for him if he can make it happen. George Commons, engineer for Rick Kelly. Here we are, James Courtney. He's got 5.3 seconds. He's nursing it, isn't he? Kelly's still showing on our numbers as needing fuel. Courtney's not. But we're now down to such finite amounts, it's near impossible to second guess from afar. What he does have at the moment is a race lead. Three laps remaining. There's the gap. So at the moment, it's the Holden Racing Team one and three. Jack Daniels racing in position two with the Nissan Altima. Then Craig Lowndes in fourth from Van Gisbergen. P3, so we've got Rick and James in front of you both safe fuel to the end. Currently P3. Just, if I'm in the lead, just saying you are the leader. David Russell's never had a podium either, so this would be a good day for him if. And then encouraging Tander to, to hustle, to push on. He's 4.1, Garth Tander behind Rick Kelly here. Stop the rear brakes then. Two laps to go, you have plenty of fuel. That's the, that's the team radio, Alistair McBain to James Courtney. So uh, that awkward gear shift there, no blipping on the downshift, so just momentarily stopped the rears and had a little moment trying to stop it. Here's James. 4.4 now between Courtney and Kelly. Jack Perkins looks on. Might be race win number 14 for James Courtney here. He's got tears in his eyes, I reckon. Looking Maybe a little bit of emotion from Jack Perkins. Father was a legend of this game. This is about to be his day, to be a breakthrough winner. He doesn't want to be on telly, that's okay. Uh, Van Gisbergen just spoke a moment ago about my mistake, so he maybe got something wrong there in this last lap. Count of a 97 in position five. We're nearly there. That extra little, remember I talked about if you're down the order, come in, grab some fuel, top up. It would only have been just a fistful, just a tiny little bit of fuel for Courtney, but that's what made the difference. That little splash. Last lap, Ash Walsh, not four position. Ash Walsh, not four position. So great presence of mind to understand the scenario, to sacrifice a track position when they were out of order and get some fuel in. <laughs> Fingers crossed. You'll be right, Jack. It was a pretty tense moment for him. He's worked all his life, Jack Perkins, for something like this. His previous best is a fifth. He had a run last weekend in a sports sedan, and he had a win there. He's been doing more mileage. Here we go, James Courtney. Half a lap remaining, 3.3 seconds. It's virtually done for him. He's back in business after the rib injury and all the drama of yesterday. 
And James Courtney is about to grab 150 valuable points and make a big statement. Some discussion about there being less than a litre of fuel in this car to get it to the line. Perkins about to join his dad, his legendary father in the record books as a race winner here. And what a story for James Courtney. Out of the game since August. Broken ribs, punctured lung. What a gritty, determined racer. He comes back and Courtney is a winner in V8 Supercar on the streets of Surface Paradise. You beauty. Perkins wins his first two. It's a special moment and Garth Tander and Warren Luff claim the Pertec Enduro Cup with a podium finish. Rick Kelly and David Russell, congratulations to the get home second for Nissan Motorsport, Murph. Jack Perkins, can you believe this is fairy tale stuff, isn't it? Well done, mate. The team did that. James did that. Awesome, mate. Awesome. He's a tough guy. You don't often hear him like that. <laughs> Bruce Stewart, the commercial manager in the black shirt. Ryan Walkinshaw. That's a big pressure relief after yesterday as well. Great story. Tremendous to think that Courtney, so frustrated, waiting in the wings. He hated Bathurst being on the sidelines watching on, and he comes back with a question mark and does it with Perkins. And, uh, but all because they had the presence of mind to grab that fuel. They came out of the train, sacrificed position in the train, grabbed a few more litres. May have only been five to ten litres of fuel. That's what made the difference. There's your podium. What a great race this afternoon. Fairy tale finish to the Castrol Gold Coast 600 and a podium result for Garth Tander and Warren Luff, who's done it before Luffy. He again puts his name on the Pertec Enduro Cup. Here's David Russell, competes in the Porsche Carrera Cup, co-driver to Rick Kelly. This is a special moment in his career too. Absolutely. That's Matty House at Nissan Motorsport. So that's a big moment for him. He had a tough deal at Bathurst when he made that little mistake up at the cutting. Any time you can occupy the podium in this business, then that is a very fine performance, so well done. Nissan was stoked to have him as a part of their program too. He was with them as an onlooker at the Le Mans 24 hour. Been doing some sports car stuff this year. Scotty, Scotty Sinclair, uh, great call. Amazing oh. driving by Rick to save a lot of fuel to bring that home in second place quite comfortably. Yeah, in the end we got there, uh, we got there good, but um, yeah, he did, he did an awesome job. He was saving sort of 10% per lap, every lap. So, unbelievable effort. Um, the guys on his car, George and Giovanni, called it home perfectly. We hit the pot right where they were expecting. So, absolutely nailed it. Can't believe that after uh, where you were at the end of the first lap. Yeah, I know. We had a barrier of a start. And, uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> rest is history. Well done, bud. Thanks, mate. James Courtney's second win of the season. 14th career victory. Sixth win with HRT. And it's phenomenal. Can you believe it? Out with injury, comes back to the game. Critics question whether it was too soon. It's a gutsy drive. Clever strategy by the team. And Perkins has been the super sub throughout this whole campaign. He deserves this. <laughs> Frank the Tank times two. He's not feeling those ribs at the moment. <laughs> Breaks a winning drought of 23 races for the Holden Racing Team. They were so pleased with that podium at Bathurst. Means a lot for the big red team. Good job, Gussie. <laughs> first ever win for Courtney as well on the Gold Coast. First podium here since 2009. Unbelievable for Jack, that win coming in his 129th race start. Well deserved. James Courtney, what a return to V8 Supercars. Nine weeks since your injury, and you are back. Frank the Tank, times 
two, congratulations, boys. Outstanding. Yeah, look, the guys did a cracking job with the strategy. We had good, pretty good cast people who just bottled up. Jack's done a great job all the time filling in for me. I uh, can't thank him enough for standing up and, and uh, taking that leadership role, and it really paid off today and over this weekend. So I uh, need him back for next year because we need to do this every time. Your first win here on the Gold Coast, James, and Jack, your first victory in V8 Supercars, clearly an emotional one for you. Yeah, I've, I've tried pretty hard for this. Um, but, look, I'm just proud of what James and I could achieve. Um, it was unfortunate he couldn't be in the car, but, um, yeah, I think we're going to come back and try and do it all again next year. That's awesome. So good. We saw your dad at Bathurst. Do you think he'd be proud of you today? Yeah, hi, Dad. I, see, I think he said if we won, he was going to have a can, so they're on me. <laughs> Absolutely. Boys, enjoy surfing on the podium. Rick Kelly, where has he gone? Rick Kelly, Dave Russell. Mega, mega job. Strategy was awesome. Boys, you were nearly last after the first lap, Rick. Sensational. Yeah, I can't believe it. The guys gave me such accurate uh, numbers on lap time and fuel, and Dave brought it back for me in one bit with a good front bar, which we needed for the chicanes, and the guys gave me unreal uh, car strategy and fuel usage, so I'm, I'm just stoked. Dave Russell, you'll forget that, that starting position because uh, it doesn't matter in the end. You're on the podium. Oh, it does. Uh, the blinding starts that I'd got me nothing, and then... Uh, you know, look, Rico's right. Yeah, I had to really um, make sure that we looked after the car. There's a lot of people smashing curbs and uh, and tearing front bars off. So, I'm, I, as he said, I'm happy to give him the car back. And, yeah, the guys did a fantastic job. Rico uh, was a magician on the fuel usage. He, um, oh, he just did a fantastic job. So, very, very pumped to be here. Awesome job. Well done. Enjoy the podium. And Garth Tander, Warren Luff, congratulations. Podium here at the Gold Coast 600. And you boys are the Pertec Enduro Cup champions. Well done. Yeah, thanks. It was the second one. He's the first bloke to do it. So, um, yeah, great job by the team. Obviously, a great result with JC winning and, uh, and us taking home the cup. So, had to play the safe strategy there. And um, we were always going to come in for a splash of dash. But we're just hoping for a safety car, but it didn't come. But um, great job by the team and, um, you know, not a bad weekend. Warren Laugh, look at you go, the double champion of the Pertec Enduro Cup. Look, it was fantastic. It was another nail-biter watching Garth do his thing at the end there. But, um, look, huge thank to everyone at HRT, Mobile, Holden, uh, Monster. It's been a fantastic ride and look forward to come back and do it again next SP year. SP Tools. SP Tools, yes. Enjoy the celebrations here in the Xbox Victory Lane. Enjoy the podium, boys. What a weekend we've seen here on the Gold Coast. Fortunes have turned in some ways. And it's just tremendous. Breakthrough win for Perkins. Back from injury, Courtney takes his first victory since the Clipsal 500. Just awesome. Rick Kelly and David Russell. And some were borderline with fuel, weren't they? Tander and Luff get home to claim the Pertec Enduro Cup. Lowndes and Richards go close to a podium after doing that yesterday. Van Gisbergen raced hard in the end. He got to fifth place. Winterbottom and Owen would end up outside the top 10. They came into the weekend with a 78-point lead in the Enduro Cup. So we'll see what happens in terms of the Drivers' Championship standings as we shake out these results. Coulthard and Yulden, 13th, Holdsworth and Bourdais. Bourdais had a good endurance campaign. Hope we see him back here in 2016. Oh, Pye and Ambrose there in the day in 21st. Look at this. Ooh, some tears in his eyes. Emotion charged. It's a great Finally, side. It's a great really side. Very cool thing to see. Jack's a, said before a ripping young bloke. He's worked all his life for this. He's been completely immersed in the business of V8 supercar racing, literally for his entire 29 years. So, <laughs> wonderful achievement, and uh, not a bad comeback for James Courtney, is it? When you consider the woes that he's been through, not to mention yesterday's pretty difficult day at the job. Reckon there'll be a pretty proud Larry Perkins watching with the laptop open and keeping an eye on lap times along the way. Set for the podium. Let's join Chad Nalon. It's time for the race 27 podium here at the Castrol Gold Coast 600. In first place for the Holden Racing Team, James Courtney and Jack Perkins. <laughs> for Jack Daniels Racing, Rick Kelly and David Russell. And in third place for the Holden Racing Team, Garth Tander and Warren Luff. <laughs> Representing the Castrol Edge winning team is Alistair McVean of the Holden Racing Team. <laughs> With the third place trophy is Jody Schmidt, Chief Executive Officer of TAFE Queensland.
With our second place trophy is Diana Hall, the marketing director of Castrol. With the surfboard for the Castrol Edge winning team is Ben Rose, consumer marketing manager of Castrol. And with our first place trophy, the Honourable Kate Jones MP, Minister for Tourism and Major Events. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2015 V8 Supercars Castrol Gold Coast 600 Race 27 Podium. I'd now like to invite forward Paul Dutton, Queensland Manager of Pertec Fluid Systems, to present the magnificent Pertec Enduro Cup to Garth Tander and Warren Luff of the Holden Racing Team. Congratulations to our winners of the Pertec Endurance Cup. Just amazing when you consider <laughs> where they were coming in. They worked very hard at Bathurst to grab that podium and they've driven superbly all weekend to be winners of the Pertec Enduro Cup. And just tremendous headline stuff. Courtney, broken ribs, punctured lung at Sydney Motorsport Park back in August. And so many people wondering whether he came back too soon here, hasn't he? Silence those critics. HRT, good call along the way. That little splash of fuel, it made all the difference. Very cool to be owners of those surfboards in 2015. Look at highlights of race 27 of the V8 Supercars Championship. A great start by Stephen Richards. The Red Bull Commodore to get ahead of the pole sitter. Scott McLaughlin, the car at that stage, driven by Alex Premer, of course. John o. Webb. Up to third in the Darrell Lee Commodore. Then this, Andrew Jones somehow keeps it pointing in a straight line after that touch, that contact by Taz Douglas. Issues for Jack LeBrock in the Wendy's Mercedes. Then this, the team Super Black entry would keep going, but there would be a drive-through penalty as a result. Hands in the air for Chris Pither. The damage, the subsequent fire, too much, and they've got some repairs to do to car 34 before it heads to New Zealand. We were worried about the way some of them were hitting the curbs on the back chicane. We saw damage there the previous day. Drivers started to get ready. Once we got to that minimum number for the co-drivers, the primaries were all ready to take over their duties behind the wheel. Congestion in the pit lane. Saw several visits to the lane for car eight today, didn't we? Unfortunately, three. And then this. Jamie Wincup and car one. Then this contact for the Xbox Falcon. Started to crunch some numbers about who was borderline with fuel. Some great work by James Courtney along the way as the race unfolded. They took a splash on the safety car, but he nursed it. He made sure that he brought the car home. Sadly, Nick Perkat went close. Not quite enough. It needed fuel with a handful of laps to go. The LD Motorsport driver was fourth at the time. James Courtney away for a few months and back in the winner's circle. A breakthrough win in Jack Perkins' career and they win the Pertec Enduro Cup with Garth Tander and Warren Luff. What a weekend here on the Gold Coast. We hope you've enjoyed it. And the next stop on the tour, the ITM 500. Not much time for the boys to celebrate because there's a bit of work to do before we ship all those cars and freight to New Zealand for the next round of the series.